uh, game last week, which was a great win. They put that one behind them, and uh, they're full speed ahead now on UCF. It's just that kind of a business where you just can't, you just can't sit around and, and sulk when you lose, and you just can't celebrate more than a day after you win a game. It's right back to the grindstone, and it's right back getting prepared for the next one, and that's where they are. They've been having really good practices. They had really good practices last week, Clip, going into the game with Tulane. And they had a good practice yesterday. Uh, they're going to be excited. They're going to be ready to go because uh, until the last couple of years where Cincinnati has taken over now as the big dog in the American Athletic Conference, UCF had that run in which they were the big dogs in, in the AAC. And these players know that, and they know this is a, a signature type game for ECU football. So they'll be pumped and, and ready to go, and I know they'll – They'll play hard, and they'll give a great effort in Orlando on Saturday. Going to need everybody uh, clicking on all cylinders, and that was the case on Saturday, Jeff. I believe four receivers uh, catching for over 50 yards in that game, and you had your usual suspects with you know CJ and Tyler Sneed, but Ryan Jones kind of saw him break out for the first time on Saturday. Jeff caught a touchdown from Mason Garcia. The Mason Garcia package has become a thing each week, so we're seeing some new wrinkles from Donnie Kirkpatrick, but Ryan Jones looks like he could be a weapon in this offense the second half of the year. Voice, uh, especially when teams are keying in on, on Sneed and CJ and, and, uh, and the great backs in the backfield, you got a nice weapon there in Ryan Jones and, of course, Shane Calhoun as well, who has uh, had his breakout game uh, uh, in Huntington against Marshall. So a couple new uh, weapons to the arsenal for East Carolina. Yeah, no doubt about that. Ryan Jones uh, is scary. As athletic as he is, Cliff, I remember talking in the preseason with Holton Naylor's, and I said to Holton, uh, what do you think about this guy, Ryan Jones? And his, his eyes just lit up. And he said, this guy is just uh, an incredible athlete. You don't go to Oklahoma unless you're an incredible athlete, which he did out of Mallard Creek High School in Charlotte. He was playing defense for Lincoln Riley, wanted to come back a little bit closer to home and play on offense. So the Pirates gave him that opportunity. And I just think we're going to see him continue to emerge. When you have that kind of athletic skill and talent, it's going to come to the surface sooner or later. And, you know, he's just getting his feet wet now playing offense and learning Donnie Kirkpatrick's system and, he did have a breakout game for him last week, and I think we'll see him more a part of the game plans moving forward. But he, he's scary. He really is athletically. And so you're right. They've got another weapon there, and fans, uh, they love to see the tight ends involved in, in the offense and love to see the tight ends making catches and run after the catch. And they've got two guys now doing that. And then you've still got Zach Bird and, and Aaron Jarman, who are two more tight ends, who are being used primarily now in blocking situations. But... You know, Zach's a, a really good player. He just hadn't had a chance to catch the ball yet. Aaron Jarman played a lot at Temple before he transferred here back home for his uh, final year of eligibility. So, you know, we may see those two guys before the season is over make catches as well from the tight end position. So they've got a lot of numbers, and that's what we've talked about, Clip, with the overall football program here, that that's what Mike Houston has been able to do is now in his third season, there is some quality depth, and this is still a very young football team. A lot of these guys are going to be able to come back and, and play next year, and they've got what looks to be a pretty good recruiting class coming in for next year as well. So I think finally for the first time in a long time, we're seeing the numbers get better, and we're seeing the depth better and quality depth now at just about every position. And so the program looks a lot more solid now, Cliff, than it has in a long time. Yeah, you're right, Jeff. I, I take part in this little, uh, it's like a blogger uh, AAC poll every week. A guy from Tulane who um, covers the program there in New Orleans put it together a few years ago. And I guess I, I represent the East Carolina. You got a representative from every team in the American. And we, we do our rankings every week. And East Carolina is number five in that poll this week, Jeff. And uh, the creator of that poll says that's the highest they've been since uh, this poll was created a few years ago. So just to see East Carolina fifth among AAC teams in a, a non-official doesn't matter blogger poll still means something, Jeff, because uh, you know they just have not been able to creep in that top half of the American for years and years and years now. Kind of been at the basement. So look, that's going to change as well as the year goes on. But seeing East Carolina ahead of some of these teams that have beaten ECU so many times over the years is uh, it's got to be a it's a, a good feeling for Pirate fans and of course the uh, the players and coaches as well. 
Well, I'll tell you what, Cliff, it's a show of respect. It yeah. hasn't been a whole lot of respect for the program in the last few years because of the way it has been losing. And going into the opening game of the conference season last week against Tulane, East Carolina's record in the American was 16-40. and 40. Yeah. 16-40 and 40 in football in the American Athletic Conference. It's 24 games under 500. And so you don't really have to editorialize too much about that. That speaks for itself. And so now, hopefully, the Pirates are going to be able to be more competitive in this league. And, you know, it doesn't take much for fans, uh, especially East Carolina fans, to get excited, Cliff. And you've heard me say this dozens of times, and I will continue to say it as long as, as I'm here. The fact is that when you give these folks and you give this fan base something to get excited about, I mean, they rally behind it, and it comes quickly. It only takes... Like now, three straight winning games for the Pirates, and you can see how the attitude has changed and how people want to get behind the program again. And you got to give them a product, though. And that's been that's been the problem with football and at basketball at ECU in the last number of years. They, they just have not had a product to get excited about, and it's so very very difficult to bring that excitement and sell tickets and get people involved if you're continuing to lose. Year after year, well, you know, you, you start winning a few games and that attitude can change in a hurry. Now, we don't want to put the cart before the horse because the Pirates have two really tough road games now coming up, and there is that feeling that people live from week to week. So if the Pirates can't win at UCF, which will be tough on Saturday, and can't win at Houston, which will be tough later on in uh, this month, then all of a sudden, you know, you've got a couple of back-to-back losses, and, and people start saying, well, they're still not ready to turn the corner yet. So, again, it's it's a week-to-week basis. Uh, you got to take care of business this week at UCF, and, and then I think the open date week, and we'll talk about it next week, of course, Cliff, is coming at a good time. It's coming smack dab in the middle of the season. Yeah. Six games in. you got six games to go. I know in past years, East Carolina had some – some really early open dates, like maybe after a couple of games, and then sometimes I think there was a couple of years there you played like ten games or nine games before you had an open date, and at that point it really doesn't do you a whole lot of good. So the open date's coming at a great time, six in and six to go, right in the midpoint of the season. So uh, you know there are a lot of things are lining up the right way, Clip, and another good thing is the fact that they've been able to stay away from major injuries. Yeah, I mean there have been a couple here and there. But you hear me talk about it all the time when we visit in August. You got to keep your key guys healthy, and they have been able to do that for the most part. They've had some offensive line injuries, and Bailey Malavik, the starter at right tackle, went down for the year, which which is not good. But overall, this has been a healthy football team, which you have to have if you're going to win football games, especially at programs like ECU. So, you know, right now the the dominoes are, are falling the right way, but. It's a week to week basis, and you got to be ready to go every week, and you got to stay healthy. So, you know, we got a long way to go yet in this football season. Jeff Charles joining us. Jeff, uh, next week during the bye week, we'll talk a little hoops. Already got uh, your partner in crime lined up, Cy si Seymour, for uh, a chat next week. And uh, folks listening right now, I, I hope you're sitting down. I got some shocking news. Cy si Seymour says ECU hoops will be better this year. So just uh, <laughs> yeah. everybody, everybody relax. For years, Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> the streak continues. But I tell you what, nobody can fire me up for ECU basketball like Cy si Seymour. And uh, we'll do that next week right here on Pirate Radio Live. Jeff Charles joining us. Jeff, you talk about week to week, focus on the next opponent. Try not to, to think about what's coming up down the road. Uh, how tough is that for Luke Fickle in Cincinnati right now? Because they got past the tough part of their schedule with Indiana uh, on the road and, of course, a trip to South Bend where they really handled the Irish with ease last week. So now their challenge might be, Jeff, just kind of staying focused the rest of the way. They might be good enough to to beat some of these teams if they're not 100% focused. But now if you're Cincinnati, you just don't want to get tripped up and you want to keep this winning going and see if you can find yourself in the top four. Yeah, no doubt. Well, Luke Fickle's an excellent coach. He's a lot like Mike Houston. He's a taskmaster. And I'm sure he has the attention of that football team. Now, uh, we always talk about these are 19, 20, 21 year old guys. <laughs> Sometimes things can go off the rails too. But you know, I, I really think that uh, that he he he'll keep his team 
focused, and, and wouldn't it be incredible? I know we're looking down the road here, Cliff, and, and you mentioned this to me about how I look down the road at games, which I don't a whole lot, but I keep thinking to myself, wouldn't it be great if Cincinnati comes in here undefeated on November the 26th, and they've got all these great plans, and maybe they're going to make the Final Four, and the Pirates upset them in Greenville and, and you know, spoil the whole apple cart. Oh, yeah. Uh, that would be an incredible win, an incredible night if that if that could happen. But we've got a long way to go, and Cincinnati's really good, and, and Desmond Ritter, he, he's just made so many strides as a quarterback at UC. He's just such a handful. I mean, he throws it, he throws it well. And then when the pocket breaks down, he can take off and, you know, he can run 60, 70 yards for a touchdown. And he's just really, really good. And so when you've got a quarterback like that, as long as he stays healthy and he makes plays, they're going to be, they're going to be tough and they're so physical. On defense, uh, they're the most physical team in the conference. And as I mentioned, they have supplanted UCF. UCF was the team in this league for a number of years, but, but now it's Cincinnati, especially the last couple of years. And so you're losing, if you're the American, you're losing your, your top two football programs in, in UCF and Cincinnati, and then Houston's not too far behind. So that's not good for the league, but it's good for those programs who are going to be moving on to the Big 12. Jeff Charles joining us. I guess all eyes on the Big 10 this week, Jeff, as uh, you've got several teams there in the top 15, top 25, and you've got, according to um, Chris Felica. Uh, from ESPN, uh, the the stat guy there uh, on College Game Day says this will be the first top five Big Ten matchup uh, since 1997 that did not include Ohio State in that matchup. Uh, it'll be Penn State and Iowa uh, going at it on Saturday. And one of those teams, both of those teams in the top five right now, so one will drop, one will keep their spot. And uh, we saw several top ten teams lose last week, Jeff. It's a wacky world of college football. I'm really enjoying this season with a lot of upsets and kind of some different names in the top 25. And we'll see what happens between Iowa and Penn State. Right now, uh, both of those teams 5-0 and heading into the showdown on Saturday. Yeah, that's the national game of the week. There's no doubt about that. Two uh, really good teams. One of them is going to come out of there, of course, uh, with a loss. And then uh, in a little bit closer to home, Coastal Carolina, people really keep an eye on them, too, Clip. And they're number 15 this week. And they play at Arkansas State tomorrow night on national television. So look how fun, how much fun it is to, to follow them and what a great story they are. BYU's having a great year uh, as well. They're, they're still undefeated. Sonny Dykes and SMU getting in the top 25 for the first time, Jeff. Yeah, exactly. They got in at number 24 this week. And uh, I'll tell you what, they, they got that explosive offense, and they can throw the ball all over the field and cause people trouble. So that's a good story for the American as well. Michigan uh, is having a good year, too. And they're, they're a blue blood that's kind of back, at least for right now. Uh, they're undefeated as well, Cliff. So, yeah, there are a lot of great storylines in college football this year. And, of course, the biggest one is, can anybody knock off Alabama? And right now, you would think the only team that has a shot at him is Georgia. Jeff Charles joining us. Jeff, before we let you go, uh, you've got the National League wild card game coming up tonight. I've laid out a path for the Braves to, to make a run here, and that path has to include the Cardinals winning tonight and kind of opening things up in the National League. I still think it's the Dodgers at the end of this thing, but if the Cardinals can stay hot and win tonight, that opens things up for Milwaukee, Atlanta. Uh, of course, San Francisco might be the favorite. I'm just not ready to to crown them over the Dodgers quite yet on the National League side of things. American League, it'll be the Red Sox and the Rays, White Sox, taking on the Astros. Jeff, uh, any thoughts on playoff baseball and, and who we see still standing at the end of it well the cardinals went on that remarkable run clip what was it 17 wins in a row yeah. and the reds were right there with them yeah. and then all of a sudden the cardinals like i mentioned won 17 in a row and the reds started to flounder and so they ended up blowing them out and getting that playoff spot but they are just absolutely red hot going into the playoffs and that does that does really mean a lot. I think again we talk about storylines in college football. There are a lot of great storylines in Major League Baseball. How about Tony La Russa? He's seventy six years old. He comes back. A lot of people thought maybe the game had passed him by or whatever. And the White Sox just uh, demolished everybody in the American League Central Division. And so they're a fun story. Houston's a fun story just because of where they've been the last couple of years and the controversy that has surrounded them and. 
You know, Clip, we, we just, uh, in the Eastern time zone here, we, we just kind of lose track of what goes on on the West Coast, and those games are always so late. So you don't know that much about the San Francisco Giants. Yeah. But you really do follow them on a base uh, a per-game basis. But, my goodness, look how good they have been this year. They've been they've been terrific. So they're really good. The Dodgers, as we know, uh, the champs are really good as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um I know New York Yankee fans aren't too happy with the Yankees today, and you know how fans are. They want to fire Aaron Boone now after oh, yeah. four years and the general manager and everybody else, but uh, the Red Sox took it to them last night, and, and good for the Red Sox winning at home. That was quite an atmosphere, so they've got some momentum now as well. So it's going to be fun. Playoff baseball is great, just like uh, NBA playoffs and just like the NFL playoffs and, of course, the National Hockey League and Stanley Cup playoffs. Sometimes uh, those games are some of the most exciting in sports. Yeah, We're in a good time of the year right now, Cliff, with uh, a lot of stuff going on, and it's a lot of fun to watch. Yes, sir. Uh, fantastic time of the year if you are a sports fan. Jeff Charles joining us. Jeff, enjoyed the chat today. As always, we will talk to you uh, coming up Saturday on the Bud Light pregame tailgate. We'll check in with you live from the Bounce House coming up Saturday. Yeah, for the Bounce House, officially now the Bounce <laughs> House. That used to be the nickname for the stadium, but now it is the name of the stadium, officially the Bounce House. So we'll be down there bouncing along, and <laughs> we'll uh, we'll talk to you on Saturday. Sounds good. Thank you, Jeff. All right, Cliff. Thank you. The voice, Jeff Charles, joining us on a Wednesday edition of Pirate Radio Live. We'll take a timeout, come back, wrap up hour number one, and get ready for hour number two, where Molly joins us to talk postseason baseball, golf, the sport of American football, and more. Got that. Got some player interviews. Fernando Fry, Demetrius Mooney, Owen Daffer, and Mark Brown from CamdenChat.com on the way in a busy hour number two. A lot more to go on Pirate Radio Live. Back with you after this. Chico's Mexican Restaurant is the home of the best margaritas. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's every Tuesday for the Gulp of Mexico, a huge 46-ounce lime margarita for only $6.99. On Thursdays, relax and enjoy half-price pitchers of Chico's house margaritas. Choose from lime, strawberry, blood orange, raspberry, or peach. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's in downtown Greenville and now available through DoorDash, featuring a half gallon of the famous margarita mix to go for only $9.99. Chico's, where the fiesta never ends. Here with Mike Mullis from Fixed NC. And Mike, you were telling me the other day, people ask you all the time, I didn't know you did that. What does that mean? You know, anything that involves property damage repair, call us first. If it's your crawl space, you've got interior humidity issues, a water loss, your ice maker line breaks, obviously fire and smoke, everybody knows we do those. But anything that involves interior or exterior property damage, we're your repair experts. Mike, how can everybody get in touch with you? 252-999-0001 or FixedNC.com. Tommy's Express Car Wash is the car wash Greenville is talking about. At the corner of Red Banks Road and Greenville Boulevard, this state-of-the-art wash will keep your car looking great. And now Tommy's has just launched its new 2.0 Tommy's Express app. And anyone who downloads the app now will receive 30 free days of washing with their top-of-the-line wash, the Works Wash. Download the Tommy's Express app now by going to your app store or visit them on location open seven days a week at the corner of Greenville Boulevard and Red Banks Road. Eastern North Carolina's choice for window tinting, signs, graphics, wraps, graphic design, and more is Signs and Tint. Signs and Tint is family owned and operated right here in Greenville, and their NC licensed electricians specialize in vehicle wraps, paint protection film, and more. They can even do building signs for your business. Signs and Tint offers 10% off for military and first responders. Also, make sure to mention Pirate Radio at checkout for a discount. Stop by their office today at 801 Staten Road or visit them online at signsandtent.com. For the latest from the world of golf, tune in every Saturday morning from 8 to 10 for the Golf Shop Radio Show. Hosts Mark Greenhelge and Matt Blanchard talk golf from tee to green and everything in between. If you like golf, you're going to love Golf Shop Radio. Before you tee up, drop on in. Welcome to the Golf Shop.
At West Park Motor Company, customer satisfaction is the number one goal while offering a wide range of cars, trucks, and SUVs at very competitive prices. Shop online at westparkmotorcompany.com right now to get started. Looking to sell your vehicle? Call West Park for a free appraisal. West Park is willing to pay more for your car or truck than the next dealer. West Park Motor Company with locations in Greenville and Washington and proud courtesy car dealer for the Pirates for over a decade. Go Pirates! Come and explore great shopping in downtown Washington at Naughty Life. Hi, this is Gina from Naughty Life, and new fall merchandise is arriving every day, featuring all the new Yeti products, like the loadout buckets and waterproof dry duffel bags. We have new fall clothes for men, women, and children. At Naughty Life, we have something perfect for any occasion, like new jewelry and a great selection of sunglasses from Coastal Reflect and RCI. Visit Naughty Life on Main Street in historic downtown Washington, and like us on Instagram and Facebook. Great food, great atmosphere, and great service is Atavola Market Cafe. Atavola is simply a restaurant that focuses on that, being a great restaurant. There's something for everyone at Atavola. The menu offers a variety of great choices like pastas, pizzas, sandwiches, soups, salads, and seasonal rotating selections. Lunch or dinner, Atavola is always the right call. Call ahead and get Atavola to go. Or stop by the bar for a drink with friends. It's simple. Come and eat at Atavola Market Cafe, Red Banks Road next to Food Lion, and atavolamarket.com. Atavola, pirates supporting pirates. This is Mike Houston, head football coach at East Carolina University, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. Do you need custom t-shirts, apparel, or promotional items for your business, organization, or event? Keep it local. Print it local with University Sportswear. Contact them today at universitysportswearenc.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. The best place in Greenville to unwind after work and have fun is AJ McMurphy's. AJ's has daily food and drink specials and an awesome patio, perfect for some outdoor dining. There's something for everyone every weeknight, including sports trivia with our very own Clip Brock. AJ's has live music every Friday and Saturday with no cover and brunch every Sunday. Make today an AJ's day. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here's Clip Brock. Your uh, sports trivia question today. Can anyone name the the uh, Padres manager that just got fired without Googling who it is? Not you, Chandler. Not you, Molly. Oh, why is it? Oh, it's just me? Well, we just saw his name. And no, you can't do it. And I don't know if anybody can. S- is last name Rios or something? Nope. Who is it? Well, did. Oh. Hello, 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 hello. The yeah. Tingler. They call him the Tingler. What? Was that supposed to be funny? <laughs> no. no that's, 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 his name is Jace Tingler. I have to take a tingle. <laughs> oh. I have to take a tingle. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Giannis. Jace Tingler. And yeah, where are the Padres? Where are the, I feel like the John Travolta meme looking around the room. They're not in the playoffs. No, no they're gone. A lot of talent. A lot of money. Molly, speaking of a lot of money, Mike Mullis is here. What's up, Molly? Yeah. No, not a whole lot. Uh, we have to do a short segment here because I went long in hour one. So we need a quick, quick little segment. And we're going to talk about Bryson versus Brooks. Now, this is going to be awesome. Chandler and I are so fired up for this, Molly. It's going to be one of the best events of the year. I know you're excited too, right? Bryson versus Brooks. Were they fighting? They're on the golf course. Today? Have you not heard about this? No. No. All right. Breaking news for Mike Mullis. Yeah. Did this this come out today or something? Were they playing a... came out yesterday. Uh, Bryson and... Mono, Mono. Bryson DeChambeau, Brooks Kepka will play a 12-hole match. Who cares? (laughs) Who freaking cares? And I mean... (laughs) Well, that's why I brought it's, it it's up. It's a love fest. I like when Chandler and I are in How something. the hell do you play a 12-hole match? <laughs> I just wanted you to crap on this, and boy, you have done it right out of the a gate. A 12-hole match. You didn't let me finish. I don't care. Stop. Look, they're going to play 12 and do what for the other six? Here's the scary part about this whole thing is that they nailed your reaction. <laughs> well, this is ridiculous. <laughs> We were talking about this yesterday, and they literally said, well, this is what Mully's going to say. Let's do a bit where we're really excited about something, and Mully's going to come out of left field and crap on it. We don't have to do a bit. That sucks. (laughs) And if you guys are excited about that, I think a whole lot less of you than I did before I walked in. (laughs) Which wasn't a lot to begin with. No, that's not true. Mully. First off, you can't have a freaking 12-hole match. Can I tell you when it is? Yeah, go ahead. 
All right. It is uh, the same day as East Carolina, Cincinnati. It'll be. So they're only playing 12 so they can catch a game? Yeah. They want to. It could be a historical game. Uh, Chase or room. hysterical. <laughs> you know, and I got a question Is about that. Is that supposed to be funny? Well, I got a question about that. So, I still should, should, oh, yeah, I should as a conference, should we want Cincinnati to lose? Like, if it comes down to that game, the financial reward of Cincinnati going to where they would go potentially, yeah, far, I, I mean, I, we, we kind of need the money. Yeah, yeah, right. So, I mean, it's kind of a torn between two lovers kind of deal there. No, we, we still, I, I mean, it depends on who you ask. Mike Houston wants to win. I'm sure he does. And it would be cool. But Does John Gilbert want to win it? I don't know. <laughs> the CFO would, would, would the, you know, the athletic department funds certainly would love the million dollar trickle down they would get or better. All right. This is going to be the day after Thanksgiving, November 26th at the Wynn Golf Club in Las Vegas. It'll be a 12-hole match between Bryson and Brooks. It'll be on TNT. The keys to victory this week a little bit, if anything. <laughs> Thank you, Mark Lindsay. Are you, you so you're not you're, Who ca- why you're would, gonna watch it. I'm not gonna watch it. Twelve whole match? Yeah. Like we've kind of gotten spoiled by the Black Friday match being like uh, an event. Tiger and Phil. Yeah, how it's only those two dudes would decide that hey, you know what, we're just gonna because we're both so strange, we're gonna play twelve holes. That is a weird deal. Yeah. How do you, how do they decide and how like, does let's somebody, play a, what would the equivalent of that be? We're gonna play a four inning baseball game. Let's just get together. But it's like not even nine, it's twelve. Like it's a little over half. Yeah, but play, play a nine holer if that's what you're gonna do. Yeah. So you weren't a fan of you know, like the Mickelson and, and Brady and Manning? Yeah, and- I, I thought those were cool little exhibitions. This isn't even this is an exhib. There ain't ambition. It ain't even the whole match. <laughs> All right, That's I thought where you were going there. Uh okay. So you're going to be watching uh, other things, Black Friday shopping, not paying attention. to Man, it, it, we had so much fun a, a couple years back uh, watching that. I remember you yeah, telling me about that. Yeah, had, like a, a dang. We party. had a bunch of guys over, and yeah. man, we you know because all the kind of all the ladies were out shopping or whatever. So we, man, we got together and watched that. It was so much fun. And this is, um, yeah, it's ridiculous. All right, Mike. Mike just another thing Mike Mullins I mean, doesn't like. Tell me somebody that really likes that, genuinely likes that. I, but it I'll, is, I'll, I'll the, get back to you. It is the two goofballs of golf. Well, and anybody that likes that is just it, like uh, that's like liking a game uh, that they're playing a speed up rule in just uh, because it's going to be shorter. It, they they got to be doing twelve innings to try to make or twelve innings, twelve holes to make it kind of a two hour deal to where it's maybe more viewer friendly. I don't know. It's, that's ridiculous. All right, there you go. We got the Mike Mullis take on it. Let's take a timeout. We'll come back. We'll see. Okay, why well, enjoyed it? You guys take care. No, you your hour hadn't even started yet. Oh, hour? No, we got one segment. Will you relax? Good grief! Everything you just crap on. <laughs> and by the way, if somebody craps on your place, call Mike Mullis. No, I'll get no, it taken care of. No, I'm good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> We're back with you after this. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Cadillac. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown and Wood, get a 2021 Cadillac CT5 for 0.9% for 72 months, plus $500 off. And as always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the convention center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. Hey y'all, it's October, which means it's time to get ready for Halloween. This is Lisa with Halloween Express, Greenville's locally owned Halloween superstore for 23 years. The Halloween fun is back, and we have everything you need to make it one to remember. From kids to adults, we've got you covered. We have the largest selection of masks in Greenville, plus every other costume you can think of. Come visit our new location in the Target Shopping Center in Greenville. On Greenville Boulevard, open seven days a week. Halloween Express, what are you going to be. Have you been waiting to try CBD? ENS Hemp on Fire Tower Road in Greenville is the area leader in CBD. We want to educate you on how our products work with your endocannabinoid system. These products are all natural and non-addictive. ENS offers a variety of products to meet your needs. Tinctures, edibles, topicals, and even smokable items. Customer feedback indicates relief from stress, anxiety, fatigue, pain, and PTSD, just to name a few. ENS Hemp is located on Fire Tower Road. Also, check us out on our Instagram and Facebook pages. Guess what, Greenville? Calzones are back. 
Community Calzone is the only restaurant in town specializing in calzones. Choose from over 50 different calzones, or you design your own with unlimited options, including vegetarian. Community Calzone also features wings, huge salads, and more. Plus, they deliver to almost everywhere in Pitt County. Located on Greenville Boulevard next to Ashley Furniture Warehouse, they're open for lunch, dinner, and late night for dine-in, pickup, or delivery. It's Community Calzone. There are times in our lives when we feel like we have hit rock bottom with nowhere to go, but that is actually when God is closest to us and building us into who we are meant to be. Hi, I'm Holt Nailers, and that's how Built When Broken was formed. BuiltWhenBroken.com is an apparel brand to remind people not only where they come from, but also where they are going. Visit BuiltWhenBroken.com to get the latest BWB apparel, t-shirts, hoodies, hats, and more. BuiltWhenBroken.com, apparel for our walk through life. Hi, this is Jeff Charles, and welcome inside the booth. Where does the AAC go from here? I'll have some thoughts next. There are lots of reasons to love the Carolinas. We have awesome beaches, beautiful mountains, great weather, friendly people. We have some of the best teams to root for and the best schools to be a part of. But the one reason above all others to love the Carolinas? Pepsi Cola. Somehow, it just tastes different here. Better, more refreshing. No one can really explain why. All we can guess is, it's better here because it was born here. Pepsi, born in the Carolinas. When I first heard the American Athletic Conference was considering Air Force, Colorado State, Boise State, and San Diego State as new members, my thought was, have we totally lost our minds? I mean, come on, really. A college athletics conference stretching from Pennsylvania to California and everywhere in between? And then when Air Force and Colorado State said no, thank goodness there were some people who came to their senses. Why in the world would, let's say, Air Force want to fly east through two time zones to compete against the likes of ECU Temple and USF. And there's no way Air Force would play basketball in the American. At the end of the day, the Mountain West is staying together and the American has lost three programs. Don't think there's some gamesmanship going on. The Mountain West now is claiming to be the best conference outside the Power Five or the Autonomy Five as they're supposedly wanting to be called. So who's next for the AAC? UAB looks like a leading candidate. After that, who knows? You just don't add programs to add programs. Come on back Back again next time, and we'll visit inside the booth. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, W224EI Greenville, WDLX Washington, and W281CH Washington. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. Do you need custom t-shirts, apparel, or promotional items for your business, organization, or event? Keep it local. Print it local with University Sportswear. Contact them today at universitysportswearenc.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Villa Verde on 10th Street and Villa Verde. Dozed by the hospital are open for you, serving unique and healthy dishes from the Dominican Republic. Order online at myvillaverde.com or the Villa Verde app. Order a family meal that feeds six to seven people, and they will have it ready for curbside pickup today. Whether it's dine-in or takeout, Villa Verde is a platform for good. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Cliff Brown. All right, back with you. Hour two of Pirate Radio Live. One of my favorite yet more frustrating guests we have on during the week. Mike Mullis is here. Mully, question for you. If you... How many quarterbacks would you pick that are currently starting in the NFL over Ben Roethlisberger to start uh, for your team right now? Two thirds of them, at the least. Uh, no, he, you asked me the question, and I, I'm telling you, two thirds of them. Is that your way of agreeing? Is that what you're saying? It, my way of it's my way of saying. You not agree? You might be a tad low. With I would your take uh, yeah. Taylor Haneke would be uh, in, I, the, in the in the group Heineke. there. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Davis Mills would be below. I would take Ben over Davis Mills at this point, but uh, well, man. Mike Tomlin said he's the guy, though. I know. You know what else? And speaking of Mike Tomlin, I saw this today and thinking about the show uh, this afternoon. 
So Aaron Rodgers now has come out and just this love. Have you seen this? This love fest with the Steelers? Like, oh no, I like Tomlin, and then he came out uh, the sec- later on, like, made a comment about. But uh, well, they were like winking during the game. Oh, and like and later on, he said, uh, "Yeah, everybody I know that's played there, you know, has been a positive experience." So I mean, are we setting up the courting of of, of Aaron Rodgers to the Steelers? Is that and again, man? I'm so sick of this dude. I know. Could so Aaron Rodgers do anything right now to get so, you back? Just you know what? Yes. Play football. Shut up. Just play football. <laughs> yeah, it always seems to be a little more. And where did this come Rogers. from? That we, this pre. I mean, did COVID really jack him up? Because before COVID, he wasn't this guy. At least not publicly. Yeah, but of course he wasn't in uh, contract negotiations either. But Packers win again. Uh, looking all right, Molly. So uh, I got the Bengals this week. They're a fun team, by the way. Yeah. The, when, if you yep. watch your pack play uh, Burrow and company, should be a good game this week. I like Burrow. Panthers get uh, Stephon Gilmore today. Yep. Um, what's your take on the Panthers? You were, were not believers after their Week One win. Where do you sit now that they're? I'm still not a believer. Not a I mean, long-term it just, believer. Well, there's there's still and Gilmore obviously helps a lot or should, uh, but it's there's still a long ways to go, and it all it all hinges on McCaffrey's self. Who's the best team in the NFC? Mm. Your options it's are awful, well, it's awfully early still. Okay, well today. Dallas. I would good. Go. I was going to go Dallas, Green Bay. Dallas is really good. Arizona, uh, Rams, Dallas, Dallas or Tampa Bay, Dallas. Man. Right. I mean today. I know it's kind. Of, I, I'm kind of with you. I mean their offense looks nearly unstoppable when Zeke gets going because Dak and that uh, passing game is. I, I, I mean, yeah, he is just – he came back with a vengeance. I mean, I, 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 and I'm, look, I'm not a Dallas fan. I'm not a Dallas hater, but I um, – You're not a Dallas hater? Mm-mm, I don't – yeah. You just – you're. You I mean, they're, they're, they're another team to me. Hmm. All but right. they are um, – they've been very, very impressive. For somebody that hates as much as you do on everything. Why do you keep implying that I hate so many things? <laughs> I just feel like you are a walking hater. You're just saying the looks you give. Everything about you says hate. I don't, <laughs> anybody out there that knows me knows that that is not at all close to the truth. Yeah, I know. I know. You're a, you're a lovable fella. You want a hug after this? No, I want you to change the topic. <laughs> How about pirate football? Are yeah, they, they played good. Are they for real? Well, they were the other day. They certainly were. Let's find out what happens going forward. Can they go to UCF and win? They can do anything they want to do. They proved it this past weekend. It's just a matter of execution and mental belief, I think. They put it all together, Molly. They uh, credited their preparation. Uh, there was a lack of preparation going into the Charleston Southern game. They admitted as much. Well, they, no, I mean, they didn't have to admit that. Well, but they did. That's like when somebody says, my bad. Well, we know. If you feel so compelled to say my bad, we know that it was your bad. Well, does Urban Meyer need to apologize to his yeah. team every day? Yeah, because he uh, has so far this he, week. Well, but he's such a joke anyway. I mean, he is—he's got absolutely zero street cred in that locker room. You know the worst thing, Molly? I, I just—I can't imagine this scenario. But the uh, Mike Silver, I think, reported that he went in Tuesday and did his apology tour, where he didn't really apologize, saying it was on him. He was just like we. You know, we we got to get rid of the distractions. Yeah. We need some leaders in here, all that. And then he walked out, and reportedly the entire Starts locker room laughing. started laughing. Yeah, that's got to be the worst. As the only coach. the only worst move by a NFL coach was uh, Lou Holtz writing a fight song for the Jets. Mm. Yeah, a little rah rah, little. That's that is little high so, school college. Yeah, that, it's like man. Come on. J E S T S T S T S T. Thank you, Lou. I didn't know Lou was here. Oh, by the way, you well, need I'm to, uh, leaving now. Can you read that um, that text I sent you? I don't know if I got it. From uh, Coach Gruden? Did you not get it? No. Ah, oh, shoot. All right. I'll send it now. I need Coach Gruden to read this. It's regarding his uh, virginity and how he lost it. So uh, we really need to bring that on today's program. I just sent it to you. Tell you what, this is a highbrow show right here, if there's ever been one. It is. I'm glad you're a part of this segment. Yeah. This is what we do on the Mike Mullis segment. We'll, yeah. we'll clean up our act when Mully leaves. Just read the quote. Just read uh, read his quote. So it says, uh, Bucks head coach John Jesus Gruden Christ. interviewed in the September issue of Playboy revealed he lost his virginity at age 17 in South Bend, Indiana. 
All right, Coach. Now's your your line. Yeah, man. I lost my virginity, man, to the Notre Dame fight song, man. There was a band. <laughs> oh, ass Playboy. No, no, not even music, man. It was, uh, but <laughs> but it was in my mind, man. John Gruden said, "Sorry, Molly, you got to be a part of this." He lost his virginity while playing the Notre Dame fight song in his head, Coach. What went through your mind as, as that was going on? Fight, well, that ain't it. <laughs> fight on for Notre Dame, man. John Gruden. What do you think about Gruden? Yeah, I like him. I like just peppering you with dumb questions. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Thank you. That was my job as the host of this show. All right. Uh, where were we? Pirates moving on. Um, do I have any more time? Oh, yeah, Major League Baseball. Okay. Weird, uh, weird quote by Boone last night after the game. Listen, that game was lost when Giancarlo Stanton pimped the single. That was hilarious, by the way. I mean, you think about the amount of adrenaline flowing. You're on the road. You're being booed. That gets guys, a lot of guys get some more fired up than being cheered for. Uh, He hits the ball. They all race to the top step. He's strolling to first base. Ball drops. Hits the wall and falls in. You know what? The announcer... Every announcer thought it was gone. No, but that's what pimping is in broadcasting. Like the uh, the Yankees announcer pimp walked that home run. They probably and um, Matt Vescursion on TV. Yeah, I wonder if they just looked at Stanton instead of the ball because they but everybody now, thought it was gone. Yeah, and as soon as the ball hit the wall, how many ballparks is that a fly out to left, Mully? Like I, most of yeah, them. It's a joke, and you know what the. the it, the totality of the circumstances dictate that you find a way to second base. If the ball's out of the ballpark halfway to second base, then pull back and make your trot. Yeah. But you you can't do that out of the box. And then what I really found comical is when Phil Nevin gets uh, a judge thrown out. Had no out. idea he was their third base. Yeah, when he oh, wow. gets judged thrown out at the plate, Giancarlo Stanton's out at second base making such a big deal out of it. <laughs> He's, you know, It's yeah. like, man, come on. He, he, he actually drops an F-bomb. And it's like... Really? I mean, really. And I, I you know, that 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 move could be construed, uh, you know, any way you want to kind of spin it with with where they were in the game and, and Nevin sending him. Uh, and and I heard it being you know, said earlier on the actually on MLB MLB Network that uh, they took a perfect throw and a pro- well, these guys are these guys are big leaguers and that's kind of yeah. what they do. Well, every a lot of people are pimping these days. Ronald Acuna Jr. has been guilty of it. So, but the Yankees do. Kind of come off as like it should be given to us, not earned. Well, and then the, the comment about you know Brett Boone saying that the, the league's catching up. The league him. has closed the gap on us. We you we started got, you started Garrett Cole Powell, and you've got Judge <laughs> and Stanton in the heart of your lineup. Not to mention the guys around them. Well, by the way, the Yankees went to the World Series and won it in two thousand nine. They haven't been back since. They what is he done, talking about? They closing the done, gap. They haven't done anything. No, and he is he is completely mediocre. He truly, strictly he has no feel for the game. He strictly manages the analytics. Now, I, I don't. You, you probably get mad when I bring this up. What, what could he have done different last night or this year to make the Yankees better? I don't think last night. I don't know that there's a whole lot he could do. But it's not. You know, last night was all about one game. But that's 163 chances. You know, and he played a lot of small ball. He did some things that. But it's all. And at least basically, quite frankly, if he doesn't make that comment, I don't make my comment. You know, it's kind of like, what do you, so what do you want to do, Booney? That you, we just bring in every all star and you have the AL all star team and that way it makes you a great manager. Yeah, that's pretty much their way. And they did that again this year because they brought in Rizzo and Gallo. And it, and it was funny to me too. The announcers go and, uh, yeah, that, uh, Judge and Boone have done their, I mean, Judge and, uh, Stanton have done their part. And I'm like, seems to me like Rizzo's, had a little hand in this too but garrett cole laid an egg i mean real simple they pay the cat 300 million dollars he laid an egg if i was a gm i would find a replacement for brett gardner and that probably will happen (laughs) i think that would be my first yeah that probably will happen but uh i don't know that was a wild quote after the game the league has caught up to us hey man the how about you catch up to the Rays? Like, how about you catch up to these other teams in the AL that are winning 100 games? How do you – like, if you had a chance to ask him, Booney, would you would you quantify that for me? What do you – exactly what do you mean by that? Yeah, that's It's weird. not in spending. It's not in fan attendance. It's not in reputation or value of the, of the franchise. How have they caught up to you? 
Are they? I mean, I, I don't even get that. Is just a. It's a dumb statement. Yeah, that was a uh, a weird one after the game. So the Red Sox move on to play the Rays, Molly, and in the other side you've got two teams that have kind of been coasting the Astros and White Sox. What, if anything, stands out to you about the AL? Uh, I. Uh, Nothing, By the way, the Rays nothing yet. saw a tweet last week. They won the AL East, won 100 games. All their minor league teams either went to or won a championship. Like, they are locked and loaded as far as a franchise. Well, and right it, yeah, it doesn't mean a whole lot that those guys will be the ones that are in Rays uniforms, but it certainly means that they should have some trade bait down there. Sure. I, I mean, I, look, I like the Dodgers tonight. I, I, I mean, I, I like nothing more than to see the Dodgers and Astros go at it. Uh, and so you the, were uh, being serious about that. Yeah, I think that. And, and why not? Is there anything more 2021 than that? Get them back at it. Yeah. And, and this time, then I have to root for the Dodgers. So well, whatever. But, I, you yeah. know, it, it, it's kind of like the, the played out idea that the Red Sox and Yankees are still such a rivalry. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is cool when they play each other because they've been around. They played each other a bunch. But it, they play so much now. Right. That it's and every game they play is televised. I mean, it's Sunday night baseball. It seemed like every other weekend yep. was the was the, you know those two guys. Oh, that's why I was I, pulling for Igos Mariners or the Blue Jays to, to well, do something last the week. The biggest rivalry uh, in the game to me right now is Dodgers Astros. You still want to see them get back together? I mean, I just think there's a lot of heat there. Sands trash cans this time. So I'm. I hope the Cardinals can. Pull off their voodoo magic, Joe Boo with Pedro Serrano, whatever they got going on, killing chickens, and can beat the Dodgers tonight because that opens things up for everybody in the NL. No, the only reason you say that is you feel like it gives your Braves a better chance. It does. But I feel like Brewers fans, even Giants fans, they don't want to see the Dodgers. Tell me a Brewers fan. Corey Glore. Okay. Don't ask me for another one. That's the only one. (laughs) Yep. I got my one. That's almost like saying, who's a Milwaukee Bucks fan? Corey Corey Glore. Glore. Right. Who's a Tulane Green Wave fan? Corey Glore, right? I mean, we're got you know he he's kind of in this random vacuum of who gives a crap teams. That is true. Yeah, we don't see a lot of Milwaukeeers. No, Milwaukeeans come to Eastern North Carolina. And the only time that you see anybody wearing Bucks gear <clears throat> is Giannis's stuff. Giannis's stuff. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yeah. So to me, there's a lot of there's there aren't very many good storylines if you take away. The hopes that the Dodgers and Astros meet in the World Series. Well, Mully's pulling for uh, Scooter Rogers put out a tweet. Clayton McCullough. Yeah, how cool is that? And Joe West. I, you know what, guys. What, what would be even cooler is if Joe's got first base. And you got Clayton and Joe over there. Yeah, talking kind of about hanging out. Old hey, Greenville you baseball when, stories. You remember when RV and maybe <laughs> there'll be a, a, you know, a few Marvin Jarman stories and hey, we get back, we'll run to Cubbies and get a burger. Every time I hear Joe West, I think about my late grandfather, Cliff Brock Sr., who thought every sporting event was rigged. He said Joe West hated the Braves and used to cheat when he would ump Braves games. Uh, we, we've been over this before. You had, know, Joe West has already sued somebody for that. Those types of Oh, uh, Paul LaDuca, that's right. Yeah, the catcher. I don't know if it was LaDuca. Can he sue my dead grandfather? Well, the estate of. Oh, man. Brings you and your kids. Strike right that from it. the record. Please, thank you. We'll get that off film. Molly, thanks for hanging out. We'll talk to you next week. Okay. Your time is done. So that's a quick hour. Molly's the only person that complains about being on too long and too short. This is classic Molly. I, I don't did I did anybody <laughs> A whole did, hour? Anybody Wait, you're getting rid of me now? Yeah. Uh, yes! You did both. <laughs> you're hard to please, man. Yeah. God bless your wife. She's a saint. <laughs> Molly, I love you, man. Love you too, pal. Let's take a time out. We'll come back. I mean, he really is my favorite and least favorite He's my guest. Favorite all all the same time. It's unbelievable. Uh. Can't live with him. Couldn't live without him, Mike Mullis. We will take a time out. Come back. Have more for you after this. On Saturdays, your team needs you. Your sofa needs you. And you need a Jersey Mike sub. Get it all with free Saturday delivery when you order through the Jersey Mike's app. Jersey Mike's, a sub above. This Saturday, while you watch the game at home, we're watching the grill at Jersey Mike's. Order through the Jersey Mike's app for free delivery on Saturdays. Unless you're going to miss hearing this. Jersey Mike's, a sub above.
Hello folks, this is Jamie Lane with Carolina Hardscapes and Mulch. We believe that making memories with your family and friends is what life is all about. If you have a dream of having a backyard patio, fireplace, pool, walkways, fire pits, or more, then Carolina Hardscapes is the place to call at 364-1201. You can stop by our outdoor showroom on Fire Tower Road across from Bostick Soak Furniture. At Carolina Hardscapes, we look forward to making your backyard the place to be. Find us on the web at carolinahardscapesandmulch.com. At U.S. Cellular, we can help everyone stay connected for less. And less also means more, as in more choice. Right now, you choose any phone and we make it free. Plus, get unlimited data for $30 a month with four lines. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Terms apply to uscellular.com for details. Now that life is returning to normal, we have found a lot of good things that came from the pandemic. One of them is not having to go to the wireless store anymore. The Cellular Warehouse team has been in the business of delivering phones to your home and office for 20 years. People found out about our free delivery service and love the ease of getting a new phone, tablet, or hotspot. Call Toby Williams today at 252-799-7051 so you can start experiencing the joy of never going to a wireless store again. Sailor Warehouse, your local U.S. Sailor authorized agent. The convenience of Pitt Greenville Airport is waiting just outside your front door. Service is back, so you're connected to destinations worldwide through flights from American Airlines. Plan your next trip. Book your flights today at flypgv.com or aa.com. Are you starting to plan your holiday travel for this year? Book today on American Airlines at PGV and enjoy the friendly convenience of flying from your local airport. American Airlines and PGV. Book today at aa.com. PGV. Where the pirates fly. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Kyle Gaines from Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Not only will we feature a great selection of pre-owned inventory for sale, but we'll also buy your vehicle, even if you don't buy one from us. Drive a little, save a lot. Give us a call and make a short trip to Washington and let us buy your vehicle today. It is totally worth it. We also service all makes and models at our state-of-the-art service department. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram between Greenville and Washington and WashingtonChryslerDodgeJeepRam.com. Remember, drive a little, save a lot. Go Pirates. Dear past, present, and future football watchers, football is back! Just how you remembered it. Tailgates with an ice-cold Pepsi in hand? Totally back. That between-play sprint to the fridge for more Pepsi? It's back, baby! (laughs) I really miss this. Anyways, consider this your official excuse for always putting football watching first, courtesy of Pepsi. That haircut appointment? Your mom told us you look great, so you should probably reschedule Seeing the in-laws for the first time in ages. It's been so long. Nope, sorry, Susan. Not if it's on Sunday. Long story short, after the year we've all had, we think you could use a little football watching. So crack open a Pepsi and cheer your football watching face off. With love, Pepsi. Made for football watching. (sighs) That's what I like. Hi, this is Billy Parker at Parker's Barbecue. Did you know that we have party rooms at our Memorial Drive location? We can accommodate parties from 10 to 110 or anything in between. We can serve family-style buffet or order off the menu. Parker's Barbecue. Come celebrate with us. This is Amanda Houston, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Go Pirates! You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. Do you need custom t-shirts, apparel, or promotional items for your business, organization, or event? Keep it local. Print it local with University Sportswear. Contact them today at universitysportswearenc.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Town Insurance is your premier independent insurance agency. From maximizing opportunities to minimizing risk, Town's insurance advisors offer expert professional advice to clients of all sizes. For personal or business insurance questions, call 756-8300 today. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here is Clip Harp. Clip Brock. Clip Harp. Oh, <laughs> Clip Harp. Back Clip Harp. with you on Pirate Radio Live, hour number two. Let's get to our Bud Light ECU report brought to you by Bud Light. Check out the Bud Light pregame tailgate coming up this Saturday, 2 o'clock. Crack a crap. Crack open a cold one. That's what I was trying to say. Damn, man. Yeah, sorry, Coach. Jeez. Crack open a cold one while you tune in to us, watch college football, and get ready for the Pirates and Knights of UCF coming up at 6 o'clock on Saturday on ESPN+. Plus. It'll be live from the Bounce House. Let's hear from some of the Pirates who will be playing in that game. Let's start with Fernando Fry, who uh, I believe does this interview without Jeff Charles yelling wrestlers in the background. Let's hear what Fernando Fry had to say on Tuesday. 
Tennessee oh, Keaton break one, and he gets right through the line of scrimmage, and you know, you're still on your block. It's the most. He's like he's like 30 yards ahead of you. Yeah, it's the most exciting thing. I love running down there, throwing him up in the end zone afterwards. But yeah, seeing him run down the field is a great feeling. Obviously, he gets a lot of attention, but what does it mean to you guys when he gives the O-line a shout-out after the game? Because you guys are the ones that have been holding. Yeah, it, it does mean a lot because, um, you know, sometimes we can get forgotten about, but um, unless we mess up, of course, and then <laughs> then everyone knows it was our fault. But, um, yeah, it's nice. I mean, we all appreciate each other and appreciate the work we put in because, I mean, if he wasn't as fast and as skilled and talented as he was, then we'd still be – you know, inching along down the field, but those big plays make a big difference in the game. So, what's the big thing that you guys are doing different now, and you, that you feel like maybe that you weren't doing as much before? Um, I guess it'd be, uh, you know, setting the standard in practice. You know, um, you know, focusing on the little things and working on our fundamentals, and understanding that it's a mindset that we need to change in our culture, and um, practicing how we want to play. How do you balance that? Because, I mean, it is a long season. You don't want to kill yourself in practice, but you want to set the tone. So is there a balance being physical, setting that mindset in practice, but not, like, going too far? Yeah, so practice for us is broken down. Like, we have individual and then we have team. So during Indy, you kind of slow down a little bit. But, you you know, you take those first three steps uh, full speed and you're going um, as hard as you can and because that's how you want to come off the ball. But um, we're not, like, banging each other all the time. But then we have, you know, racks of six or 12 that we're going uh, with the like good on good or with the scout. And that's when we, um, uh, I guess, that's when we get better right there. When you, got, when you go from left guard to right guard, what's the biggest difference for you a little bit on playing on that different side of the field? There's really not that much of a difference to me. I know everyone keeps asking me that. Um, I don't really have too much of a preference. Um, I guess the only difference would be is like who I'm communicating with. Because um, I mean, when I'm on the left side, I'm not talking to the right tackle. But that's pretty much it. UCF, they seem like they're pretty good up front. Uh, the, what, what catches your attention on film? Um, well, they are pretty good up front for sure. Uh, they're strong, they're fast, and they're they're a veteran group. And um, I'm excited to play against them this Saturday. You talked last week about coming together as a unit, having that cohesion, all five of you working together. Coach said you guys did that this week. What did you see when you looked at, look back at this past week's game? Um, looking back on film, uh, you definitely can see that we definitely had a lot more communication and that we worked well together. I mean, we got movement, we were moving people off the ball, we were getting to the next level, and you could see that with the big plays. And um, when, you know, when you see an old lineman get to the next level, that's usually when you see a big run by Keaton or Rajay. UCF kind of took it to you guys last year, not necessarily the guys, but the Well, UCF's a good team, and they've been a good team for a while now. Um, so, we, we really got to bring our A game and just keep getting better throughout the year. And I think that's what we have. We have a bunch of guys who love playing football, who believe in the process and trust our coaches. And I think when we do that, just like Saturday, we're going to go out there and we're going to do what we have to do. This will probably be the, the loudest environment on the road you guys face this year. What challenge does that create uh, for an offense? Um, I guess it just being loud. I don't know. Because when you're out there, it, it's not as loud as everyone makes it seems out to be. So, actually, I think during the COVID year and not having anyone out there, it was louder because you could hear more. And it sounds weird to say that, but really it was, it was just different. So, like, when there is a big crowd, um, home or away, it actually feeds into the game. The keys to victory this week a little bit, if anything. Communication, um, practice, uh, and just coming every day to get better at something. All right, keys to victory a little bit, if anything, there from Fernando Fry, ECU offensive lineman. Let's hear one more player interview uh, and hear from Demetrius Mooney, who's uh, now a special teams demon. He's on the Pirate uh, defensive side of the ball now, the former ECU running back who actually led ECU in rushing a few years ago. Uh, Here's what he had to say to the media on Tuesday. Demetrius, it's your first year playing defense. Uh, we'll start there first. What's that uh, process been like for you? Uh, it's been a, a exciting transition. I mean, of course, you know, uh, I came from the offensive side of the ball, so running forward and 
just running people over and making people miss and stuff. And then you go from that to backpedaling and coming out of breaks and trying to make interceptions and stuff like that. And just learning the uh, defensive schemes and things. Uh, the transition has been very exciting with, with just like how, how tight the defense is and, and how the defensive coordinator, defensive coordinator uh, Coach Harrell, like just operates and, and has the defense all working right now. Does, does the playing running back help you now that you're on defense kind of know what running backs do and that sort of thing? Oh, yeah, that definitely helps. I mean, um, I've seen that a lot in my transition during the spring. Um, we had running backs that would try to make moves, and of course, like I, I train with these guys, so I know like their, their best moves and what they're going to try to do to me. So when they try to juke me or spin move, or, or when they're trying to set me up to make me miss, like I kind of know like the timing of when they're going to do that, and and then also like like just the the schemes and like the personnel, the twelve personnel, twenty one personnel, and things like that. That kind of helps me know like whether they're gonna pass or 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 they're gonna run, and and just looking at how the tight ends and and the tackles and just the offensive line sets. That that's it's just like little demeanors that I pick up on. I'm interested that first conversation where they came to you and said we want you to make the switch. Uh, what was that like? I mean. It was, it was no hesitation. I mean, I, I've, I've always been a, a defensive-minded player, just like, I mean, you seen when I first got here, I, I was very aggressive. I was, a, I was a bruiser type of running back. I was one cut and go, get downhill. I always loved contact. So when I had the opportunity to, to transition to defense, considering, I mean, I had had guys like Keaton Mitchell and guys like Rajay Harris that came in the room and took advantage of their opportunities with absence of, of me in the room, I was just like, I mean, if it's another opportunity for me to get on the field to help the team, why not? You had a huge hit on special teams on Saturday. Uh, I noticed you maybe a little shaken up, but what, is it, what does it feel like when you, <laughs> when you hit a guy that hard uh, and, and kind of in the media? Uh, I mean, I love it. I mean, I mean, everybody was very concerned after the hit. Uh, I was concerned with myself, actually, but I mean, I love it because I mean, I mean, that's just who we are. I mean, Coach Houston emphasizes every day, like we're going to be a team that runs and hits. And I mean, that's what we do every day. So, I mean, I pride myself on that from from the get go. When they told me I was going to be on kickoff every every week, they said we need you to be an impact on this team. So, I mean, that's what I've always wanted to do. I wanted to be an impact. So I told Coach on. On Thursday, he, he we had to walk through, and he was like, he was like, I need you to be that heat seek uh, heat seeking missile, and I was like, all right, coach, I was like, I got you. I was locked in. I felt like the team was locked in. We went down, we executed, and then I mean, the next play, Aaron Ramsey came down with the big hit, and I mean, you seen that how special teams affects the game because they fair catch, and, and that just set the attitude and the tone for the game. When you look at Jaquan McMillan on this defense, it, just how important is he, just his total game, his leadership? How much do y'all follow his lead on defense? I mean, we follow his lead every um, every day. He's a he's a big time playmaker. He's a big time leader on and off the field. Uh, he gets us going, gets us juiced up, and I mean. The things that you guys see on Saturdays, he does those things every day. I, I trained with him personally. Went on defense, he was the first guy I went up to, and I was like, "Hey, bro, I, I need some help because I mean, like, I, I mean, it's been years since I, I done been on this side of the ball." So he was, like, "I got you." We did a couple footwork drills and things like that during the summertime. Um, but I mean, yeah, he's a very effective leader, and he's a guy that we definitely need on Saturdays. With any idea if, if they need you to play running back, could you go and take a take a carry or two if, uh, if you need spot duty? Oh, of course. I mean, <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, I came in uh, as an athlete, and I mean, that's what I'm always be. So, I mean, I'm a team guy. I'm gonna do anything I can for, to help the team and to get the team uh, a W, and that's the the goal of every week. So, I mean, it's nothing personally for me. I, my personal goal is, is to win as a team. So, if, if they ask me to play running back, I mean, I guess I'll have to dive back in the playbook and, and get a carry or two. Did you play defense in high school? Yes, sir. I, um, I, I was a Max Prep, uh, Max Prep All-American um, my freshman year of high school. I came in and I, I had, what, 54 
solo tackles with like 13 uh, assisted tackles. So, I mean, early on, that's what I thought I was going to be. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I always thought that I was going to be a, a defensive end, like a, a Julius Peppers or, or someone like that. Like, I thought I was going to be a, a stand-up rush guy because I've always had like a, a, a strong figure and, and I was always explosive off the ball. So in high school, they used me as an outside linebacker to come off the edge. And I mean, fortunately, I, I didn't get to, to 6'3", 250 like I wanted to. But I mean, that's how I play. That's my mentality. So I mean, I mean, yeah, I played defense all my life and that's always been like my primary like position is outside linebacker safety. But as I got to college, I made that transition in running back and I mean, it's all worked out for me. How have you and Jeremy helped the defense learn more about the offense? You said, you know, you pick up on certain tendencies. How have you helped train the guys that have never played on the offensive side of the ball before? Uh, I mean, Jeremy Lewis, a uh, big time playmaker. I mean, he's an athlete. I mean, everybody sees it. He, he, he made an immediate impact from the jump when he first got over to defense. I mean, I was more of a, a slower transition because I mean, I mean, Jeremy is, he's a, he's a smart guy. Our freshman year, I would go to Jeremy's dorm room and be like, hey, bro, I need help. Like, help me with this homework assignment. So he's a, he's a very intelligent guy. So, I mean, with his leadership and stuff like that, and I mean, my leadership, I mean, we both bring, bring a, a lot of, a lot of attributes with picking up tendencies and just knowing like and practice it's kind of funny because both of us made that transition this year and they're like oh they're making those plays because they know like they know the playbook and I'm like hey like I, I completely wiped that out of my mind like I'm focused on defense now but I mean it's just like I naturally just know so it's not that I'm 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 already just cheating cheating the system or anything it's just I mean I've been in that position I've been on the other side of the ball so so my instincts are are, are more quicker than others when when I see something happening all right awesome interview with Demetrius Mooney hearing him talk there you wonder why he was so accepted of his role change to the defensive side of the ball because that's where he feels comfortable and you heard him there he said he grew up and always thought he would be a uh, a defensive end like Julius Peppers, and he said he ran the ball with an aggressive defensive mindset. So uh, really cool to hear from Demetrius Mooney there, and uh, and who knows, man, uh, could turn into a one of the key members of the defense uh, by the time he's done at East Carolina. He's already making some plays on special teams right now. So uh, great attitude on that young man, and uh, you hear the buy-in from him and others, and that's one of the reasons the Pirates have been able to win three straight games we'll take a timeout. come back when we return we will switch gears talk some baseball uh mlb playoffs mark brown camdenchat.com will join us we will talk about tonight's wild card game get his thoughts on what's going to happen in the american league and more we'll do that to wrap up hour number two of pirate radio live on a wednesday back with you after this In a world of fake profiles, fake tans, and fake flavors, naturally flavored Michelob Ultra Organic Seltzer strives for realness. It's USDA certified organic with no sugar or carbs and only 80 calories. So the only thing touching your taste buds is organic, refreshing, and delicious. Michelob Ultra Organic Seltzer, as real as it tastes. Enjoy responsibly. Not a low-calorie food. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Organic Seltzer, IRC Beer, St. Louis, Missouri, 60118. Pirate fans, single-game tickets are on sale now for as low as $20 for three great games to come. East Carolina will take on the Bulls of South Florida, the Temple Owls for Hall of Fame weekend, and then Thanksgiving weekend, it's nationally ranked Cincinnati. For tickets, go to ecupirates.com. You can paint this with purple. This is Dr. Chris Hasty with Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center. For more than 35 years, we've been taking care of the student athletes at East Carolina University. We are happy to have received the designation of official team physicians from the university. Whether you need assistance with a sports injury or it's time for that joint replacement, my colleagues and I are here to help. For more information, please contact us at 757-2663 or visit our website at orthoeast.com. 
North Carolina State Parks is proud to announce that they have partnered with the Hometown Strong Program. Our visitor centers are now equipped with public Wi-Fi to help kids with school. Remote learning has become a critical public health measure in maintaining social distance and continuing to educate our young people. Take advantage of Wi-Fi and a hike at Goose Creek State Park or a day trip to the beach and access remote learning at Fort Macon State Park. For more information, visit hometownstrong.nc.gov. Burgers, wings, hand-cut, hand-breaded chicken tenders, fresh salads, and cold beer is the starting lineup at Tiebreakers and has been keeping customers happy for 20 years. Tiebreakers Family Atmosphere is the perfect place to come watch your favorite team play while enjoying a great lunch or dinner. In a hurry or looking for catering options? Get Tiebreakers to go. That now includes the new curbside pickup by ordering online at tiebreakersnc.com. Tiebreakers. The icy treat that can't be beat is Sparky Snowballs. From big kids to little kids, Sparky Snowballs has been making smiles happen for over 20 years. If you're not in the mood to chill out with a snowball, Sparky's funnel cakes and fried Oreos are a perfect Sparky-licious treat every time. Are you having an event, party, or fundraiser? Call Sparky's to come on site. Remember to follow Sparky's on Facebook or visit SparkySnowballs.com to see where they'll be next. Have you ever seen those exotic aquariums like the guys do in Las Vegas on television? You ever thought about having one of these aquariums in your business? It's more affordable than you think. This is Hal Pruitt with rentafishtank.com. We can make having an aquarium in your business turnkey with no work, cleaning, or hassles for you. Rentafishtank.com creates a relaxing atmosphere and keeps children occupied. Rentafishtank.com already services many dental, pediatric, and doctor offices, plus hospitals and senior living centers. Check us out at rentafishtank.com. University PC Care has been the Pirate Nation's go-to IT expert since 2006. Unfortunately, many organizations today simply react to IT issues after the damage is done. This is known as the break-fix cycle in the tech service industry. University PC Care's business services division has a better way, a proactive solution called BizCare. What's at your office? Call William at University PC Care today to schedule your free BizCare consultation or learn more at University PC Care. Com. Hey everybody, this is David Glenn, and you're listening to my favorite station in Eastern North Carolina, Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. <laughs> You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. Do you need custom t-shirts, apparel, or promotional items for your business, organization, or event? Keep it local. Print it local with University Sportswear. Contact them today at universitysportswearenc.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. You work hard for your money at Carolina Wealth Management. We believe that your money should work hard for you. Do you know if it is? To learn more about your investment portfolio, go to MyCarolinaWealth.com to schedule a free consultation. That's MyCarolinaWealth.com. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's Clip Rock. All righty. Ready for some football this weekend. Ready for some playoff baseball. We got a little bit of a taste of it tonight as the Dodgers take on the Cardinals in the National League wild card game. We got uh, the AL Series beginning Thursday. AL and NL both playing on Friday. Let's talk some playoff baseball now with Mark Brown from CamdenChat.com. The O's will be back in the playoffs one day down the road. Certainly not this year, but uh, Mark, we appreciate your time joining us today. How you doing? Cliff, I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Hey, doing great. We're trying to mix in some baseball talk uh, with all the football talk we got going on here at Pirate Radio. And uh, Mark, before we get into the playoffs, let's uh, let's hit the positives from this 2021 Orioles season. You got, of course, North Carolina's own Cedric Mullins, who had a fantastic year for the O's. You had Trey Mancini coming back from cancer and uh, you know competing in the home run derby and, and having a good year. And also, I guess John Means and uh, had a you know no hitter his performances this year. Anything else in the positive column you'll remember from twenty twenty one, Mark? Well, Cliff, you know uh, the Orioles fought on the very last series and found their way into getting the number one pick in next year's draft. Like there you go. West. So I guess that's another positive. No, but um, you know the, the three ones you mentioned are pretty big. Cedric Mullins, the first thirty home run, thirty stolen base season in Orioles history, is pretty cool. 
John Means throwing the first solo Orioles no hitter for the um, since 1969. I mean, I still can't believe I saw that. That was just really the most amazing individual moment. And as you said, Trey Mancini's return from cancer. Just the fact that he was able to get back to playing baseball at all, let alone have a pretty uh, pretty nice season with 21 home runs and a, about a league average bat overall is, you know, it's fun. Um, the rest of the team maybe not so much, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, there's there's fun going on on the Myers, uh, and reason to be hopeful for probably next year to be a bit better of a team, and maybe even back in the playoffs within two years. Mark Brown came to Chad.com joining us. Mark, a few weeks ago, the Eagles and Cowboys played on Monday Night Football, and uh, I, I'm watching the Manning cast, so uh, that was entertaining. I, I kind of hate the Cowboys a little bit more than I hate the Eagles, so I wanted to see Dallas lose, but... Uh, if it was Phillies Mets in a in a wild card game, I don't know even know if I could hate watch that one. I'd probably just find something else to do. So, just curious, how did you consume Yankees Red Sox last night? Did you hate watch it? Did you find something on Netflix? How did you uh, enjoy that one? No, you know that's a good way good way of putting a clip. And I actually have a little confession. Uh, my fiance grew up as a Yankees fan, so as far <laughs> as this house was concerned, there was kind of a mild preference. She oh. and now we both uh, we both have season tickets for the Orioles, but uh, she has well, she doesn't have my life experience of hating the Yankees, forged particularly by the uh, Jeffrey Mayer game <laughs> in the nineteen ninety six ALCS. I just um, for me, that's the team I will always dislike the most. So. I'm happy that the first exit from the postseason was the Yankees. But, uh, <laughs> no, we we had the game on, and she's much more anti Red Sox. So, if the Red Sox had lost, I would have been happy. If the Yankees had lost, I would have also been happy. <laughs> uh, I would have just been a little bit less vocal about it. So, you know, uh, as far as we were concerned, it was a fine outcome. Mark, you, you've seen a lot of Red Sox this year. You've seen a lot of Tampa Bay Rays. The Rays, 100 game winners again. I saw a uh, tweet, Mark, that had the of course the Rays winning the AL East and then it had all of their minor league teams either went to or won a championship I think I mean it's amazing how this organization top to bottom has been successful year after year and of course they play in that awful stadium down there at uh, at the Trop and but uh, they continue to get it done so Rays Red Sox Rays have to be a, a big favorite in this series uh, what I don't know what's the deciding factor in your opinion in this Red Sox Rays series well, I mean, for the Red Sox all year, it's been can their pitching hold together in the middle of chaos, and they've managed to pull it together somehow, much to my chagrin, uh, you know, and win 92 games, even though they've really never not answered a ton of questions, uh, you know, throughout the years there, throughout the, as the season went along. They got, uh, you know, they got, they got four guys that had a 4.5 ERA or higher, and it's like, well, how are you succeeding, even, you know, in the AL East with that, and they managed to make it work, uh, even though they didn't really have one truly elite uh, back end reliever that they came into the season with. And it's just, you know, they, they had the uh, they had a whole bunch of COVID roster chaos, and that's just, you know, maybe you don't want to bet against them because they were able to overcome all that. But just the Rays are, uh, you know, winning a hundred games is really impressive. I wouldn't want to bet against the 100-win team, even in a uh, short kind of best-of-five series. Mark, how about the White Sox and Astros? They've, they've kind of been coasting. I mean, I'll admit I haven't watched a lot of Houston or, or Chicago baseball this year, but just keeping up with the standings, they were in control, especially the White Sox, in their divisions for the last, what, month, month and a half, maybe even longer. So now these teams are playing with some pressure for the first time in a while. Uh, how do you handicap this series between the White Sox and Astros? Yeah, I mean, the White Sox won their division by the biggest margin of any uh, team. They had 13 games over the, uh, the Cleveland. So that's impressive when you win any division by that much, even though the AL Central, uh, probably not the most fearsome division in MLB this year. Um, I mean, as far as who I hope wins, I still feel like the Astros didn't really get uh, sufficiently punished by the <laughs> league for the uh, the whole sign stealing business so i i don't really want to see them kind of uh march through the playoffs i i i, I doubt they're doing exactly the same thing anymore but just it doesn't really feel right that they uh they kind of got off not scot free but just it didn't feel like the punishment fit the crime um but i mean they have a lot of very good players i wouldn't i wouldn't want to bet against the astros either um though it wouldn't be very interesting i i guess the way i kind of try to approach the 
playoffs as an Orioles fan, where the Orioles haven't won the World Series since 1983, which was before I was born. Uh, I, I would like to see someone that kind of hasn't won in a while get to win it, and that's kind of who I usually pick to root for. So, I mean, as far as that goes, my teams are probably like the Rays and the Brewers. But, uh, I mean, the White Sox, getting back to that series, I mean, they have a good team, too. That's why they won 93 games. They won their division. Uh, they had a pretty good uh, set of guys in the starting rotation. Uh, you know, Lance Lynn, Carlos Rodon, Lucas Giolito, that's pretty good uh, top three guys to throw in for, you know, your short playoff series. And... Um, it's, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's not a very satisfying answer when you're talking about a baseball series, but it's short enough that anything can happen and the best t- team isn't necessarily guaranteed to win. So, I mean, really all you can hope for as a fan is that they're fun games. Well, having said that, uh, we don't want to see one of the uh, the teams that just won one and anything can happen. So let's root for the Cardinals tonight to add a little chaos to the National League side. It'll be... Uh, a couple of my peers in age, 40-year-old Adam Wainwright, 37-year-old Max Scherzer going at it tonight in L.A. as uh, the Dodgers get to show off some of their new toys in Scherzer and Trey Turner as they take on the Cardinals. The Cardinals had that just crazy finish to the regular season, winning all those games and, and running away with the wild card. And now they'll try to stay hot, Mark, against the Dodgers, who I still think, and despite what the Giants did this regular season, I still think the Dodgers are the team at the end of this thing. Uh, but that could all change uh, tonight if uh, if they go down to the Cardinals. I, I mean, I certainly agree with you. The Dodgers, uh, you know, they've got the the name, the kind of the name brand guys, especially since you know they got Scherzer uh, at the trade deadline, which really, you know, it's not like they weren't star studded already, but yeah. it's just really, uh, uh, really, just amazing. But uh, I mean. You know, if if you look back and it's like, oh, the Cardinals knocked off the Dodgers, well, it's like, oh, of course the team that managed to win 17 straight games in September is uh, able to kind of come in and win one more uh, clutch game. I mean, uh, it's it really was a remarkable streak. And, of course, they needed to do that because they weren't even really in the wild card picture before they started winning all those games. And then just they zoomed past everybody and uh, they got their way into they they get to play the one game. Um, I, I always feel like in a kind of the wild card game, you kind of give the slight edge to the home team. A, they've got the crowd on their side, and B, of course, by the rules of baseball, you're guaranteed to bat last uh, if you need to, potential to get a walk off. Um, so, you know, if, if it's a little bit of a coin flip, maybe like 52, 53 percent Dodgers, but. Uh, you know, Clip, I know you do a, do a little bit of gambling. I've gathered from following you on Twitter, and uh, you know, uh, plenty of 46, 47 percent chances uh, end up paying off and being the favorite. <laughs> that uh, that is true. Talking to Mark Brown, CamdenChat dot com. Mark uh, uh, Joe West is a Greenville, North Carolina native. Uh, everybody around here knows him. Uh, my grandfather, rest in peace, uh, big Braves fan, also thought that every sporting event was rigged. Uh, used to tell me at a young age that Joe West hated the Braves and used to always cheat uh, when he'd on Braves games. So there's that. Uh, what is the uh, what's the opinion of an Orioles fan on Joe West as he's ready to hang it up after these playoffs? You know, I can't think of a specific, like, Joe West really put it to the Orioles, but um, <laughs> general philosophy on umpires and really any kind of professional officials is uh, if I know their name, that probably means they're not good. <laughs> that's a good point. So that's kind of my uh, that's kind of my Joe West take. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I like that. You know, any, any of the other umpires. Yeah, it's just, you know, it, you don't know who they are if they're doing a good job. You really only notice when they're messing up. Mark Brown, CamdenChat.com, joining us from a fan perspective. Mark, you said you wanted to see just somebody different uh, there at the end of the World Series. So you, you you shouted out the Brewers as a Braves fan. I don't like to hear that, but uh, Brewers got some great pitching. That series begins on Friday. Uh, so if the, the Brewers may be your team on the National League side, who would be the team on the AL, did you say, that you'd like, you wouldn't mind seeing there at the end? Oh well, you know, I, uh, I I don't know. I don't like to say that it's the AL East team, but really, I mean, the yeah. Reds won 100 games. They were the best team in the American League, and sometimes it's like you want to see the best win. You know, it, it just it, it just feels kind of right from a karmic standpoint. Like in 162 games, if the team that had the best record is the team that gets the World Series, 
you know, I can I can live with that uh, if it's not the Yankees or the Red Sox, which in this case, of course, they didn't have the best record. So uh, it would be annoying to me as an Orioles fan a little bit if the Rays won, but also I think that's probably to the extent that you can have uh, justice in sports. I think if they ended up being the AL representative, that would probably be kind of feel right. Mark Brown came to chat.com joining us. Mark, thanks for uh, joining us through another season of Orioles baseball. We'll keep it rolling uh, hopefully next year with you. And, and we, again, we are kind of on the ground floor of this rebuild for Baltimore. So they're going to start winning more and more. And uh, you're going to have more exciting things to talk about as the uh, the months and, and years roll on, hopefully. Oh, yeah, Cliff, there were definitely uh, encouraging stories on the Orioles farm system, especially the double-A team in Bowie where uh, they made it to their league championship series. There were a number of the team's really strong prospects, spent a lot of time on that team this year. You had Adley Rutschman there, uh, the top pitching prospect in all of baseball, Grayson Rodriguez, uh, the Orioles minor league home run leader, Kyle Stowers, who was their second-round pick in 2019. Uh, you know, there's some real talent that's marching up. Um, Probably not going to be on the opening day roster next year for the Orioles, but hopefully by the second half of next year, you're going to start seeing some of these uh, bigger prospect names, and that'll hopefully mean better things in the standings for the Orioles. Excited to see uh, Connor Norby rise through the ranks as well, as we'll uh, keep an eye on the former Pirate, who the Orioles got pretty early in the draft uh, this past year. Mark, thanks for joining us, man. We might uh, might lob you another phone call during these playoffs and get your take on things, but we appreciate your time today, and uh, have a great uh, off season. We'll talk to you again down the road. Sounds good. Take care, Cliff. I'll uh, catch oh. you next time. All right, there is Mark Brown and a loud grunt from Bryce Williams as he joins us here in the Fire Radio Studios. <laughs> Bryce, you an old man? This is making some oh, old no. man noises. Sheesh. Ah. Sometimes I realize if I don't have my headphones on, no one can hear me. <laughs> You're in your own world. Uh, sometimes when I'm eating or just kind of sitting in a chair, uh, my wife would be like, what? Were you in pain? What's wrong? <laughs> yeah. I'm just making old man noises, yeah. and I don't even realize. You can it always good to just it does you verbalize. Can, it. You can always expect some kind of noise or kind of side <laughs> talk from Bryce. Yeah, and I always forget when I set up the camera for Bryce, I have to go higher on the camera because if I go on a normal w- with a normal frame, half of his head is out. He's a tall fellow. He's, yeah. yeah. He's a tall dude. Dude. We will talk to Bryce Williams coming up in just a moment. Moment, but right now we will take a time out come back hour three of pirate radio live on the way three in a row for the pirates for the first time since bryce williams was on the football team can you believe it? and some more tight in action uh, yeah we got to talk about ryan jones and his performance on saturday as well hour three with big bryce on the way on pirate radio live after this Hey, Pirate Nation, Lindsey Gray here with Carolina Caliber. In 1960, my granddaddy started his firearm business right here in Eastern NC. Still family owned and operated, we have the area's largest selection for outdoor shooting sports and accessories and are one of the nation's top firearm dealers. At Carolina Caliber, we have everything you need from hunting, home defense, and personal protection, including a wide variety for ladies and youth. We buy, sell, and trade. It's a time-honored tradition. Visit us at Carolina Caliber on Fire Tower Road in Winterville. Tommy's Express Car Wash is the car wash Greenville is talking about. At the corner of Red Banks Road and Greenville Boulevard, this state-of-the-art wash will keep your car looking great. And now Tommy's has just launched its new 2.0 Tommy's Express app. And anyone who downloads the app now will receive 30 free days of washing with their top-of-the-line wash, the Works Wash. Download the Tommy's Express app now by going to your app store or visit them on location open seven days a week at the corner of Greenville Boulevard and Red Banks Road. At U.S. Cellular, we can help everyone stay connected for less. And less also means more, as in more choice. Right now, you choose any phone and we make it free. Plus, get unlimited data for $30 a month with four lines. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Terms apply to uscellular.com for details. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. Other food delivery apps charge surprise fees, but Domino's is giving away $50 million worth of surprise frees, like free pizza, lava cakes, or cheesy bread when you order delivery online. And we found some unique ways to get the word out. Like shouting from the rooftop! Screaming it! 
We even called Paul Revere. Free lava cakes are coming! Order delivery online and you could get a surprise free from Domino's. No purchase necessary. Open U.S. residents 13 and up through 11 21, 21. Odds of winning are 1 in 14. See rules at surprisefreeze.domino's.com for free entry, blackout dates, restrictions, and details. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1 800 682 6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. If you are a push mowing your yard using an inefficient lawn tractor or your current zero turn spends more time in the shop than mowing your grass, it's time you look at a Hustler zero turn lawnmower. Residential mowers from Hustler are built like tanks and drive like sports cars. All Hustler mowers have fabricated welded steel decks. Don't settle on cheap units with flimsy stamped decks from big box stores. Come see Ron Ayers Motorsports and we'll guide you to the right mower for your property and your budget. Find us at Ron Ayers Motorsports Highway 11 North of the airport in Greenville. Hey, Troy D here for my friends at Villa Verde. If you know me, you know I love being outside, but finding a good place to eat outside can sometimes be tough. Well, our pals at Villa Verde have fixed that. Not only does Villa Verde have awesome, unique, one-of-a-kind dishes here in Greenville, they also have a brand new outside dining area. And this outside area is sweet. It's covered, you're in the shade, and cooling fans are on. Enjoy the comfort and relaxation of dining outside with our friends at Villa Verde. Villa Verde on 10th Street, a platform for good. BMS Builders is your premier custom builder in eastern North Carolina. With Blackwood and Mills Creek in Greenville, Dalton's Cove in Farmville, and Belmar in Aden, these are just a few of the developments featuring BMS Builders Homes. They can build the home of your dreams. Just ask Dr. Dennis Ross in Greenville or East Carolina football coach Mike Houston. They built their homes and they can build yours as well. BMS Builders. Give them a call at 916-1578 for BMS Builders. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Live well, move more, and hurt less with kinetic physical therapy. If you're recovering from an injury, getting back into sports, dealing with everyday pain or fatigue, then kinetic physical therapy can help you get back on track and live well. Kinetic has nationally certified therapists for physical, occupational, speech, and massage therapy, all in a state-of-the-art facility on Arlington Boulevard in Greenville. Visit kineticptgreenville.com for more information. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here's Cliff Rock. Back with you on Pirate Radio Live here on a Wednesday, a Bryce Williams Wednesday, Shirley Rhodes, Chandler Honeycutt here. And uh, taking your thoughts, you can chime in, 317-1250, or chime in on the Facebook live feed as we got that thing figured out. Been some Facebook issues this week, but we are good to go right now. Bryce, welcome back to the program. How you doing today, man? Thank you all for having me. I'm doing pretty well. All right. Too bad. And I'll see another good... uh, Good evening to uh, talk about some ECU football. Heck actually. yeah, man. And uh, before we get there, though, Susan says, Tell Bryce I thought about him. I stopped on Portertown Road and rescued an orange spotted turtle. Nice. By t- talking to it in the middle of the road and coaxing it to the other side for safety. She must have had a lot of time <laughs> to, 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 get, to kind of coax it to the other side, but good Come job. Come on. Well, good job, Susan. Bryce hey. talks to him while he's carrying him yeah. off the road. So, yellow. What you say? Orange spotted turtle. That sounds like it'd be poisonous, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, stay away from the snapper on that. <laughs> All right, thing. you little buddy. Now you walk that way. <laughs> yes, you must have had. Uh, must have been not during uh, rush hour. Yeah, it wasn't at that roundabout. I'm guessing. Yeah, in yeah. Quarter town. Uh, we'll get Pirate Radio outdoors because apparently Bryce was outdoors. I was. On uh, even Saturday. We'll mm-hmm. talk about that momentarily. Bryce, Pirates pick up 
and i, I love to do these just because it, it feels like we're we're getting back mm-hmm. to something but first win over two lanes since you beat them in 2014 mm-hmm. first three game win streak since you were the here in mm-hmm. 2014 first time ecu's had a winning record in october since 2015 Jeez. when you were here so bryce uh got something going man. on here man and this was the whatever you want to call it complimentary football uh team win this yeah. was it offense defense yeah. special teams all coming together for a great performance on saturday yeah most definitely and yeah i have my day my, have my whole day scheduled out but long story short i was out too far too long on the water too um, long and too far too long yes exactly <laughs> so um you know of course I, as soon as i get into the channel or whatever i try to look at my phone and see, see uh see where you've won well no we were up uh the game was still going on but uh yeah after watching the highlights my goodness that was one i wish i could have just chilled either been in daddy ficklin or at least been able to watch the full thing because it looks like we were fire, fire on all cylinders and um like you said the you know the whole team with the special teams defense offense um everybody just meshing was great you know 52 points i mean that's uh, that's awesome we, we score 52 points each game we got a good chance. So we're going and you know what? Game. If you give up less than 30 in college football these days, yeah. you're going to win Winston, quite a few ball games. Exactly. Now, so that's not what you want. You want a few less. Right. But, you know, you, you hold a team under 30, you're going you're gonna to win some games. For sure. And, uh, you know, you uh, filling me in on some of the stats and everything, you know, Tulane throwing three interceptions, kind of what I saw in the very beginning. It's like, oh, great, we got an interception, and then it's a three and out, and you're like, okay, well, that just killed that high there. Um, you know, we must have taken, you know, full advantage of those uh, turnovers, yeah. I mean, um, which is great. So we're, you know, doing that. I mean, p- pass protection and, um, you know, run. I mean, it was, like I said, I wish I could have watched that one. And Keith Mitchell, my goodness, it's. That that left sideline, that home, yeah, they, that thing is gonna get burned up. You know, <laughs> they're gonna have to repaint that soon. Um, you know that, and then the long ball, fourth and two. How awesome is that to not only convert but to you know have a dang um bomb to Tyler Sneed, um, and then you know, Keith Mitchell on the second touchdown and. How many touchdowns they had? You know, Holton having that good run. Um, I think right where he had scored was dang near right where I scored my first touchdown. Um, and to see him doing that, breaking some tackles. I mean, like I said, I wish I could have you know watched that game and um, you know really seen the full, uh, see every play and um, cheer some. But super happy that we're finally you know coming together. We got to yep. take it week by week. But you know, a conference win that's huge at yep. home. Um, you know, we got a tough one this week. Um, you know, but hopefully I mean, we can just keep it up and you know keep this keep this train going. Bryce, uh some bad news. East Carolina still stinks on third down, three of fourteen. Yeah. Good news, four of five on fourth down. So who <laughs> needs a third down when you're just gonna get exactly. it on fourth? And and they did, I wonder how many of these and maybe Donnie will be asked about it today. Uh, we got the OC press conference coming up, DC, uh, DC as well. But how many of those were planned? Like, all right, it's third down and five, but we got two plays to pick this up. You know what I'm saying? I wonder how many uh, they went into thinking we're going to go for it on fourth and how many were spontaneous. Um, but either way, that four for five on fourth down, unbelievable. It's a great I, Oh, for sure. Um, well, thinking back, I want to say for the most – you kind of knew, or well, if we don't get it, we're going to go for it anyways. Obviously, yeah. depending on your field position and you know the situation of the game, um, which was nice. You're like, you know, we're going for it. So it's almost like that all-in mentality. Um, you know, when that when it comes to that situation and to see how good we are on fourth down is uh, that's comforting. You know, say, so, oh darn, we didn't get it, but shoot, we're we're doing pretty good on fourth down. So um, to not be able to turn the ball over like that is you know great. I played those clips for you last week, Bryce, of the players admitting they did not have the the preparation, the seriousness, the focus they needed going into Charleston Southern. Mike Houston took care of that immediately, uh, and kudos to the players for yeah. following him and doing what they needed to do. They also cut out the dumb, unsportsmanlike penalties. Yeah. It was a, it was a completely yes. different look from week to week. But do you remember as a player, Bryce, and you? You might not be the guy to talk to about this because you're so you're not very emotional it mm-hmm. seems like and you don't get too high or too low you were always every time we talk to you after practice the same yeah. the exact same but as a team do you remember when you would have 
really good focus weeks of practice as opposed oh, yeah. to like bad kind of lackadaisical practices. And how much does that run into game day on Saturday? It was, yeah, like thinking back, you kind of feel like the coaches pretty much let you know if you're either all, you know, doing well or not doing well or focused. I mean, there was, you know, several practices. We were like, what? You know, the offense is, we're just. Met, you know, offside, jumping off sides or interceptions or drop passes. Um, you know, I mean, it's it definitely, I don't know if ever, ever, ever really recall it affecting the game week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the game, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely been practices where you're like, dang, gum, what's going on? Like, we're in a little funk here. And like right. I said, they were quick, the coaches were quick to say, all right, stop it. Like, let's get this things going, chill out or w- focus. One of the two, um, you know, so when you're in those lulls during practice, you're like okay, like it's not, let's get this fixed. Especially if it was like, especially if it was a Thursday at practice. Now we had because that was you know obviously your last practice of the week, and when you start having those little funks, I think, I think as the players you're kind of not too worried about it. Right. Maybe the coaches are like okay, like they start to get concerned. Come on, guys! <laughs> like we got a game in two days, and y'all aren't doing so hot. So um, you know, and, and with Coach Houston addressing that, and it definitely looks like the team said. Yeah, we better not do that again. And, yeah, uh, looks like they turned around, they stuck with it, and you know, obviously had a great performance. Fifty-two to twenty-nine, Pirates getting to three and two on the year. Now, Bryce, they go on the road to UCF. Now, the Knights are still a very talented, mm-hmm. very fast uh, physical football team, but their quarterback's out, Dylan Gabriel. He got hurt the last play of the Louisville game a couple of games ago. They are down a lot of guys on both offense and defense, and they're coming off a loss against Navy, which was an upset. Oh, right, yeah. So they this thing's going to go one of two ways here, and you're one of Gus Malzahn. They're going to bounce back Saturday, kind of return to form. They are 2-0 and at home. They could get to 3-0 and at home, flying high, mm-hmm. feeling good. Or they could let these back-to-back losses, and especially the Navy loss, just stay in their heads and just kind of quit on the 2021 season. Right. So this is a a huge game for UCF to bounce back. East Carolina going in with a lot of momentum. When the schedule came out, I was like, well, this is a loss. Now I feel a little bit different right. about it heading into yeah, it. Yeah, and as I was thinking, I said, you know, we're coming off of a high, you know, we're still on this high. They're kind of, all right, what's going on? You know, funk. And I tell you, when we know, when we, we tend to, seem to play at the level of our competition I feel like um, which is good and bad Yeah. Um, but you know with these guys with this team however we've played the last three weeks um, or I guess we'll say more recently you know last weekend um, how on fire we were and crisp we looked um, and the big thing you know, we weren't beating ourselves you know the unsportsman's likes I mean yep. those are huge you just those are frustrating um, to have. So I mean, obviously, it'd be nice to have UCF at home. That would be great. Um, but look, we put on the you know, you got to put on the road. And I think these guys, if they can keep you know sharp week this week, keep this momentum going, be smart, uh, take advantage of the you know the opportunity to forget any turnovers. Then I mean, geez, I mean, why not? I mean, of course, you know, I'm pulling for them. So uh, or got them, you know, winning, you know. So if. Well, you know, it was, it's kind of hard not to play the if game, but you know, if we beat UCF, it it'll uh, it'll be pretty. It, 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 All right, so you out. guys went down there in 2015. UCF was O and whatever at the time, O and ten. Golly. you guys were four and six, but still had a bowl as bowl chance. Mm-hmm. You got down seven to nothing. Traquan Smith, who's a NFL wide receiver with the Saints, right? He scored. And went up seven to nothing, and it was like, oh god, is ECU going to lose to a winless team? Is this really <laughs> oh, yeah. about to happen? And then y'all rolled up forty four in yeah. a row. Uh, let's see if Bryce did anything. I don't, I don't know, know if I did too much. I, I don't think I scored in that game, which is kind of a bummer. Let's see what uh, if Bryce did anything here on this game. Bryce, you need. Oh, there you are, six for forty seven. No touchdowns, but yeah. he got involved. Six yeah, catches. Got involved, so. Uh, so you've won in that stadium, but this is an entirely – boy, how things have changed since oh this game, God, right? Yeah. UCF has been undefeated and like, the talk of the college football world. Yeah. And East Carolina has is, is gone way down and now trying to fight their way out of the hill. But I don't know. Do you remember anything about that game? That was a Thursday you know, night game, I Thursday, want to say. I think it was rain, – was it like raining before? So I think the atmosphere of the stadium was kind of funky because – I don't think 
he was like you know rowdy or anything like that. I think they were in that. Well, again, ball. they're zero and eleven. Zero and so. eleven. So <laughs> zero and ten. Uh, I think it'd be a little different. Um, you know, when I was when we were there, and um, you know, I'm sure that's changed now for you know from what UCF was to what they are now, but. Uh, I remember being a real big. It's a big like metal stadium, yep. isn't it? Which is kind of they funny. call it like a director set. Yeah, that. yeah. So it's not real appealing, but I mean, it's you know football. It's big, but uh, you know, nothing crazy. Not not something. You know, not very really exciting. They were uh, the, play, the crowd was going crazy in the opener against Boise State, and I'm just wondering now if they're going to have that that same type of atmosphere after losing two straight and their quarterback being out because UCF is a team, Bryce, that right now their expectation is win the league, go to one of those big New Year's Six Bowl games. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, that's kind of out of the question at this point. Right, they've lost two. So they've already lost two. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what their mindset is. I kind of – I look, I, UCF's a 10-point favorite, but I do like where ECU is right now heading into this game. Most definitely. Um, like, like I said, it gives us a lot more confidence and feel a lot better being uh, what three and two? yeah three, three and, and two. two three and two versus zero oh and five. You know, I mean, um, I feel good about. It. I'm, real, I'm really anxious for it. Uh, what time is that game? That is a six o'clocker on ESPN Plus. All right, I think I'm. I think I should be able to watch that. So, if you got questions, uh, let me know. Bruce. I'll believe you. I'll, you'll be the first one I have. I don't <laughs> watch this game. Um, I'm excited about it. I mean, just knowing how these guys are playing. Um, goodness gracious, it's just. I'm just ready to watch it. You know. Yeah, and uh, and maybe some more tight end action for this team as we saw Ryan Jones get going on Saturday. Shane Calhoun. Yeah. Uh, still in the mix as well. So just adds uh, another element, right? When teams start keying in mm-hmm. on Snead. Uh, yep. CJ and the two backs in and the backfield. And the two backs, yeah, for real. I mean, God, you just throwing all that. I was like, well, dang, I'm working. We got some stuff we, we here. We got some stuff. We got a toolbox. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, of course, I'd love to you know, be able to utilize bow tight end. I mean, like I said, just we got a whole plethora. <laughs> I love when you break that word. Yeah. So That's we a got, fan favorite. Yeah, right I mean, I'd love to see some number 80 action for sure um, from Shane, see him ball out, but see everybody ball out and uh, – just everybody firing, you know. Bryce, uh, are kickers football players? Yeah. Okay. He says yes. Shirley, let's take a break. We'll come back. When we return, we'll hear from pirate kicker Owen Daffer. Mm. And we will, uh, Bryce says he is a football player. I like that. I respect that. Mm. And uh, we'll hear from the pirate kicker for the first time in 2021. We got that. We got Pirate Radio Outdoors and a giveaway coming up on a Wednesday edition of Pirate Radio Live. A lot more to go after this. Buccaneer Music Hall is your beacon of music in the land of pirates and ENC. Open seven days a week from noon until 2 a.m., the Buck features live music every night of the week. Tuesday is karaoke with DJ Captain Morgan. Wednesday is acoustic night. Thursday is the DJ dance party. And Friday and Saturday nights, it's live bands. Check out the Buck's Facebook or Instagram page for more information. The Buccaneer Music Hall. We'll see you at the Buck. That's for you. Answer the call from patients who need plasma. Donations are down, so give plasma at a Griffles Center and receive compensation. Visit grifflesplasma.com. Gonna get that? Answer the call from patients who need plasma and receive up to $700 your first month when you donate at a Griffles Center. Visit grifflesplasma.com. Hello, this is Talbot Green with Angel Oak Home Loans. Now's the time to take advantage of the opportunity to buy more home or refinance your current mortgage at historically low rates. The combination of our local team's experience and Angel Oak's wide offerings of products from standard conventional, government, and portfolio loans has something for most financial situations. For more information, call Talbot Green, Joanne Weir, or Wanda Hager at 751-2060. NMLS 1719250, Equal Housing Lender. Hey, Troy D here for my friends at Villa Verde. If you know me, you know I love being outside, but finding a good place to eat outside can sometimes be tough. Well, our pals at Villa Verde have fixed that. Not only does Villa Verde have awesome, unique, one-of-a-kind dishes here in Greenville, they also have a brand new outside dining area. And this outside area is sweet. It's covered, you're in the shade, and cooling fans are on. 
Enjoy the comfort and relaxation of dining outside with our friends at Villa Verde. Villa Verde on 10th Street, a platform for good. Hey, Pirate fans, your one-stop shop for all your tailgate essentials is Shimmer Boutique. Need some purple and gold to wear? Shimmer has a great selection of clothing for men, women, and children. Need some shoes? Shimmer has the best selection of Hey Dudes around. Need a cooler for tailgating? Shimmer has you covered with a huge selection of Yeti and outdoor accessories. Shimmer just one minute from the stadium on Greenville Boulevard behind Starbucks and in Winterville and Jacksonville. Find us online at shimmerboutiqueonline.com. Go Pirates! Hey Pirates, this is Holt Nailers. A big part of my success on the field is what I eat at home. To keep my body filled up, I order meals off a Clean Eats meal plan. I choose the meals I want from six different meals offered each week, and I pick them up on Sunday or Monday at the cafe on Red Banks Road. Each meal is packed with the perfect mix of healthy proteins, carbs, and veggies to keep my engine running at full speed. Go to cleaneats.com, click on meal plans, or stop by the cafe and get all the info. Clean Eats and the Pirates, a winning combination. Are you suffering from anxiety, sleep issues, or chronic pain? Have you heard of CBD? You can learn about the benefits of CBD right here in Greenville at the Hemp Garden. Hemp Garden offers a variety of products and solutions that are truly making a difference in our community. Hemp Garden also provides products that can assist with energy and focus. Have a pet? Come check out their selection of CBD pet products. Visit Hemp Garden to speak with a CBD specialist in a relaxed and welcoming environment today. Exclusive discounts are offered to first-time customers. Hemp Garden, located at 3040 South Evans Street in the Target Street shopping center in Greenville. ASAP Party and Tent Rentals is your one-stop shop for weddings, anniversaries, corporate events, family reunions, birthday parties, or any celebration with friends and family. ASAP Party and Tent Rentals has the widest selection of tents, tables, chairs, linens, china, concession equipment, bounce rides, games, staging, wedding equipment, dance floors, and so much more. At ASAP Party and Tent Rentals, we help people get together. Call today at 756-7903. ASAP Party and Tent Rentals, locally owned and operated on Diamond Drive in Greenville near Agri Supply and Equipment Plus. This is assistant football coach Drew Dudzik, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding Pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Eastern North Carolina's choice for window tinting, signs, graphics, wraps, graphic design, and more is Signs and Tint. Be sure to stop by their office at 801 Staten Road in Green or you can book an appointment online at signsintent.com. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's Flip Brock. Back with you on Pirate Radio Live. I asked Bryce as we were going to break, is Owen Daffer a football player or the kicker's football players? Matt says he kicked and recovered an onside kick. He is definitely a football yeah, player. That was a big play. Good call, Matt. No doubt. Uh, also, Josh, I will read your comment once we get to Pirate Radio Outdoors in a moment. Got a question. A Pirate Radio Outdoors related question for Bryce coming up uh, later on in the show. But right now, let's continue on our Bud Light ECU report and hear from Pirate Kicker Owen Daffer as he talked to the media on Tuesday. Well, Owen, your, your first year kicking, I know you were here last year, but just what has this uh, experience been like your first time really playing? Uh, it's amazing. I mean, I've always grown up watching college football. The atmosphere is electric. Dowdy's great. Uh, I love. I love the atmosphere. I love the crowd. I love everything about it. So, so you, you seem to be settling in. You could sense a little bit of nerves in the first game, a little bit. But um, talk about how how it feels now that you've got a, a few games under your belt. Yeah. So the first game, a shock was not being able to hear. Obviously, I I've never had to deal with that. But after the first time, you get you get used to it pretty easily, and then you settle in and you appreciate it. I, lo- I honestly like not being able to hear. I like away games. It's it's calming, not like to hear all the crowd. And I don't know why, but it kind of calms me down. Coach Houston has described you as a surfer dude, kind of laid back. Is that a fair uh, representation of your personality? Yeah, it's pretty fair. I uh, back home, I I love surfing. I love doing uh, being at the beach and just hanging out. Uh, I have a skateboard. I ride around 
uh, campus on to get to classes and everything, and it's just, yeah. What are some of the things you do <laughs> on the road when you get to a stadium, so when you get to the bounce house on Saturday, what are some of the things you do uh, I just do my regular routine. I go out there, warm up a little bit, uh, make sure my body's loose, go back in, then we all come out as a specialist group and uh, kick, kick a little bit more with the snap and hold, and then just lock in for game time. Do you ever have like, like go to coach and say, hey, I can get, I can get through 50 breeze, or I can get to 55, or 70, or anything like that? Uh, I, I, I let him... Uh, judge where I should be kicking out. I don't really intrude in that sense, but my farthest ever is 65. I hit that uh, in a competition for to go to the Polynesian Bowl my what, senior year of high school. I'm sorry about that. What are your uh, your thoughts about this league? You know, y'all come off a big win and then you have to play, travel to another good team. It's just every, every week you're playing a good team. What are your thoughts about just kind of getting through that? Uh, I love competing. Competitions, uh, it's a fun thing for me. Like it, everything I've, do, I've done here since I've got here, it's been competition. We have a pool table. We we're always competing on that. Uh, practice every single day. We play ping pong all the time, me and my buddy. So everything I do is really competition. So it's it's not really much different. I, I don't really try to think too much about uh, the league and the competition too much, I just try to focus in on the game and have fun during the game. What is your process after a kick? Make or make? Make or make? Uh, I just go back, to, I go back to the net. So I go back to the net, make sure I uh, continue practicing my fundamentals and making sure I'm hitting the ball well, regardless of whatever happens. Uh, and just try and clear my mind to, to the next kick, regardless of I make it or miss it. I try to stay focused completely on what's going on in the game and what's uh, when to be ready always. What do you learn from Jake Verity uh, sitting under him and, and watching him last year? I learned that uh, he, he does well with kicking during the game. Like He's a, he's a game time player, which is a it's a little bit like kind of personal so like some people are really good during the game some people aren't I've always felt like I'm really good during the game like practice obviously you have to do you have to be consistent all week during practice but he he just had another level he had a switch during the game and he prepared for getting ready for that so that's the biggest thing I saw from him can't be perfect all the time, but can you talk about your confidence level, how it's, how it's improved as the as the season's progressed? Yeah, definitely uh, getting more experience always uh, gives you more confidence and realizing the different factors in the game, like the crowd noise, uh, those things will give you more experience and unlock different levels of uh, understanding of how to do the job. And I think I've realized a lot of the things. I, obviously, there's a couple more things I have to unlock, like being in a game time, game winner situation. I've had the, I've had the situation where in South Carolina went up 17-14. So I know it's like to be in a big time kicking situation to give us the lead. But a game winner, I still need that under my belt to really improve more, in my opinion. Over the summer, Coach, you know, said that there was a kicking competition. And how have you worked? Or has it made you work harder knowing now there's a kicking competition? I'm guessing you probably didn't have as much of that in high school considering you. I'm guessing you're the only D1 kicker on your roster. Yeah, 100%. That's uh, hit, it to a, hit it to a T. I've always been competitive, though, so I go to camps all the time. You see a bunch of good kickers. You try and compete with them at camps to get uh, preferred walk-ons or scholarships to whatever university you go to. So in that sense, I have had competitions before, but every single day, repetitive, you have to make kicks, you have to be consistent. And that was, it was different. It definitely makes you a lot better. It's, it's insane how much that increases your skill level because you just have to be locked in every single day. And 
a lot of times in high school you you're not always locked in you a lot of times your coaches don't have kicking competitions every single day they don't have field goal every single day they just have it one day a week so having it every single day here is it's really smart and it's really uh it helps your kickers get used to situations and everything like that well, Owen Daffer, East Carolina kicker. First time we're hearing from him in 2021. And I guess you want a surfer dude, skateboard mm. bro, as your kicker because very laid back. You don't want a high anxiety guy, Bryce. Yeah, real spazzy. <laughs> you don't want a spaz kicking your <laughs> field goals. Uh, so maybe he's got the perfect temperament for it. And uh, we'll see uh, what that means for his career here. He's from Wilmington. I was thinking about it during the chat. Um, Bryce, if you were if you were from the Williamses from like Wilmington or California, I could see you being a surfer instead of a hunter fisherman. You got the kind of laid back mindset yeah. for it. I think. What do you Let's think? See. Well, you ever been on a surfboard before? <laughs> no, I'm boogie boarding, but that's been a long time ago. Um, I, I don't know. I could. I don't know. I have to be a longboard. Yeah, you know? yeah. might be too tall. You might have. I don't know. It'd be yeah. too big for I a surfboard. I need like a seven footer, however big longboards are. I'm not sure, but I, I was <laughs> looking back at the uh, the 2014 roster, trying to remember all the kickers kind of run together for me. But yeah. uh, Warren Harvey, great guy. Davis Plowman, we've talked to him. Him and uh, Worth Gregory doing some training for mm-hmm. punters and kickers in the Triangle area. Uh, did you? So I'm curious, like how much of the um, the skill guys talk to the special teams mm-hmm. unit? Did you hang out with any of these dudes? Uh, and talk to them? No, they're no. kind of in their own world. Yeah, right? they are. They're just kind of their own little uh, clique and whatnot. I mean, <laughs> like you know, if we're all out or something, we'll see. You know, we'll uh, um, you know hang out. I may have golf with Plowman and Worth one day. I, yeah. I don't know. It, it's probably not. I don't know. But uh, no, nah, it was mainly. I, they just they, they honestly they just hung out with their main yeah they their, had their, their guys, specialist crew um, they would always I feel like they'd always show up to like parties together not yeah. form but like uh, plowman Jim and um, you had the long Warren, snapper there uh, maybe yeah like the whole, and uh, <laughs> they just it would all come in as a posse and it was pretty funny Chandler as a long snapper did you ever get to talk to like the wide receivers and running backs and stuff I mean very <laughs> seldom and then sometimes they would forget who you are they're like yeah. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Yeah. I'm hey, the guy that snaps on uh, when you guys score touchdowns. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. the one that gets the ball well, not rolling, but, you know, I'm the, I am the start this thing off. You get your hands but on the ball every you time. You have yeah. your click. Like, yeah. you have your yeah. kicker, your punter, and they're, and they're usually funny guys. They're usually yeah. comedians of the team. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, for some reason, I always – Drifted toward you know with my Sean being a kicker, I always drifted towards like when the with the when I was in the NFL like with the special like would hang I talk, chat with the specialists or the kickers and things like that. Um, I think just because my brother was a kicker, so okay. it's, kind of, it's kind of funny how uh, you got a soft spot for kickers because yeah. you got one in the family. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Good deal. All right, we uh, we'll take another break. Shirley Rhodes, let's make somebody a winner on this Wednesday edition of Uh-oh. Pirate Radio Live. Booty, 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 booty everywhere. Booty, 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 booty everywhere. All right, 317-1250. Shirley, what is on the line on this Wednesday? A $15 gift card courtesy of A.J. McMurphy. All right, A.J., you can come use that while you hang out at Sports Trivia tonight. We'll have a lot of fun coming up at 8 o'clock watching some NL wild card action. Uh, what caller are you looking for? I'm going to go with uh, caller number 12. A.J. McMurphy. I watched some football there on Sunday. Might be back there this Sunday. We'll definitely be there tonight. And you can be a winner right now. We'll take a timeout, come back, and have more for you on Pirate Radio Live after this. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Cadillac. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown and Wood, get a 2021 Cadillac CT5 lease at $489 a month, 10,000 miles a year for 36 months for qualified buyers. And as always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the convention center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. 
There's nothing more important than protecting your family. Fire ants can cause painful allergic reactions and even death. Protect your loved ones at home where you should feel the safest. Visit PestTechAgreenwell.com to learn of our once-a-year treatment to guarantee you stay fire ant free. Tested and proven effective by your Eastern North Carolina exterminating professionals at Pest Tech of Greenville. Mention the crying baby for an extra 10% off. Eastern North Carolina's choice for window tinting, signs, graphics, wraps, graphic design, and more is Signs and Tint. Signs and Tint is family owned and operated right here in Greenville, and their NC licensed electricians specialize in vehicle wraps, paint protection film, and more. They can even do building signs for your business. Signs and Tint offers 10% off for military and first responders. Also, make sure to mention Pirate Radio at checkout for a discount. Stop by their office today at 801 Staten Road or visit them online at signsandtent.com. Do you suffer from allergies, asthma, or any other sinus problems? Perhaps professional cleaning of your air ducts could help. Family owned and operated in Winterville for over 22 years, Carolina Quality Air was the first certified duct cleaning company in Eastern North Carolina. From residential to commercial, they can handle any size job, big or small, including our studios here at Pirate Radio. Carolina Quality Air uses a sanitizer that kills mold in your duct work and over 100 viruses, including the coronavirus. Visit them online at Carolina. CarolinaQualityAir.com do you suffer from pain, anxiety, or sleeping issues? Eastern Healthcare has a solution for you. Eastern Healthcare is the premier CBD store with retailer quality products to help with any ailment you might have. They carry nationally recognized brands such as Curative's Delta 8, CBD Distillery, and Charlotte's Web with a wide variety of delivery systems. This is Adam from Eastern Healthcare. Come visit our store at 2245 Stansburg Road across from Vidant Hospital or call 227-4199. Eastern Healthcare. Wellness starts here. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1 800 682 6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. This is Stephen Igo. You've heard from me plenty on Pirate Radio Live and perhaps have read some of my work on hoistthecolors.net. Now, get an extension of our in depth coverage on the Hoist the Colors podcast. From game previews to immediate post game analysis to emergency podcasts for breaking news, we've got you covered. A cast of guest co hosts from fans, former coaches, and other writers join me for two podcasts weekly to break down all things ECU athletics. Subscribe to Hoist the Colors now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. Warren's Hot Dog Pizza, homemade lemonade. Hey, Pirate Nation, are you ready for some Warren's Hot Dogs? Warren's Original Hot and Judy's Mild Sweet Chili Hot Dogs have been the official hot dog of sports fans for over 30 years. Pick up a tailgate special this football season of 10 or more hot dogs for only $1.50 each. Warren's in Greenville across from Ron Ayers Motorsports and the new Chacoinity location next to the fire department. Warren's Hot Dogs. Want some? Get some. Go Pirates! Hi, this is Phil Steele of Phil Steele's College Football Preview Magazine, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding Pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Congratulations to Jay Searles of Winterville. Picked up a $15 gift card courtesy of A.J. McMurphy. Start your football weekend off right at A.J. AJ's. AJ says live music this Friday night with Straight Wire and the Blenders on Saturday with no cover charge. Come watch the Pirates take on UCF on Saturday at 6 with tons of TVs and make it a Sunday fun day with brunch and NFL football. And as always, AJ says great food and ice cold pirate beverages. Make this weekend an AJ's weekend. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here is your host, Clip Brock. Back with you on Pirate Radio Live here on a Wednesday. 
Shirley, people are still trying to figure out the uh, the system. Uh oh. Tyler trying to figure out when to call in. So Shirley mm-hmm. tells me I'm a winner, and he's got the gif of uh, I believe this is that Zach Galifianakis with all the equations running. Mm. Oh it's, yeah. Uh, Steve Hill has figured it out whatever way. He, he always wins. Shirley, Anna was eleven. Eleven? He's I'm eleven. I'm like <laughs> Bryce tries to figure it out. He's like, all right, what color? Shirley just said three. All right, we're gonna go now. Yeah. <laughs> That's so you're getting somewhere. You Here's actually 11. were close today. Dang. So next Wednesday, we'll see if you can crack the code. I'm going to try. Dang. Good luck. Dang. dang. <laughs> A lot of dangs going on around Whoops. here. Whoops. <laughs> That's our new sound effect. Whoops. <laughs> I like uh, it. Let me slip up somewhere. Bri- uh, do you got Mark Lindsay's question? We'll see what Bryce got. Your keys to victory this week a little bit, if anything. What are your keys to victory this week a little bit, if anything? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what there, Mark. Uh... <laughs> You got to score more points than the other team. <laughs> yeah, all right, there you go. That's uh, that's the goal. Well, that ain't edge. <laughs> that's, not, that's not edge. <laughs> that's the goal but, for Saturday. I mean, keys to victory a little bit, if not anything. Like, so is there a possibility that there's no keys to victory? Here, let's. I gotta hear it again. Oh, okay. Hold on. Yeah. Your keys to victory this week a little bit, if anything. <laughs> if, 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 anything. Uh, if there's anything out there sometimes and i'm guilty of this too you, you don't know when to finish the sentence right yeah and you got to keep yeah. throwing right. some extra words there <laughs> and then when you throw those extra words you're like well that's not how you finish a sentence right. and i gotta throw even more yeah, there you just keep digging that hole mark <laughs> you match up against this particular ball club as you come into this week and you know that's a, a pretty that could play you know uh at the higher level for sure <laughs> now, I I would, now he finished that strong with the for sure now he didn't say anything before that but that's how you finish a sentence for sure uh, so we he, turkeys got cooked up for thanksgiving here I, that's an all-time you know, classic hopefully. i didn't hear the uh i didn't hear the for sure on that last one can you play that one one more time do you feel like you match up against this particular ball club as you come into this week I, you know that's a, a pretty that could play you know uh at the higher level for sure <laughs> for sure Blake, where do you feel like you've uh, you've learned the most about your defense so far? Where the, what have they gotten best, uh, gotten better at, uh, best? And besides what you just talked about, where they got to get better at? <laughs> we lo- look, we love some Mark yeah, Lindsay. He's got love his own dude. style of asking questions. And uh, <laughs> kudos to you players, Bryce, for answering those tough questions. Yeah, they're brain busters. <laughs> Keys to victory this week a little bit, if anything. If anything. anything. I like that. If there's any keys. (laughs) You're right, Chandler. He is kind of saying. Now, there might be no keys at all. Yeah, that's why I'm like. You just go out there and hope for the best. Say say a prayer. (laughs) We're going to put our uniform on, say a prayer, and whatever happens after he's saying say it, but if there's none, you don't have to say it. (laughs) Yeah. It's multiple choice. <laughs> yes. You you can give me keys, or you could. If there are no keys, I don't want any. No keys. No, no keys. keys. All right. Well, I want to. I want to then what that follow up. He said <laughs> no keys. If he just. Uh, All right. Okay. Thank you. He writes on his pad. No keys. Well, that <laughs> <is>. <laughs> All right, uh, Bryce. Uh, question: uh, As we dive into Pirate Radio Outdoors here from Josh on Facebook Live. Tell Bryce I've seen some studs on my trail cam. Ask Bryce uh, if he prefers cell trail cameras or old school ones. You have to go out and check. Well, or what would uh, or what's the third option? I if mean, anything, if, 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 if anything, anything. If there's, <laughs> <laughs> some people don't do anything. Exactly. They just go out there. Uh, well, I'd like to. That's good. He's got some studs. That's always, you know, as a deer hunter, and if you got your own property and putting time in, yada yada yada, and you find a big, you know, deer on your camera, that's great. So, good job, Josh. I'd love to see what you got. You know, and then if you could share that somehow, see what, you know, see what he's. Uh, I always like to see what people. Are have. you on the face space? On the lamp. I think I do. I don't really get on face. I don't think yeah. I'm on marketplace. Just oh, that's uh, right. That's where you find your yeah, deals. That's yeah. where I find my deals. Um. I mean, convenience-wise, definitely the cell, you know, your, the cell, your cellular uh, trail cameras, which pretty much you could be in bed and... Bring, oh, so you check that. goes off, and you're like, oh, dang, he's in the corn right now, and... Oh, you get a notification oh, yeah. when, it, when something pops. Yeah, and you got to pay for cell service. Obviously, they're a little more expensive um, and whatnot. Well, if I could, if I did it, you know, had land to do it, I'd shoot, I'd probably prefer the daggum cell ones, and that way I'd save, you know, more efficient. 
So yeah. old school, are you seeing it live or do you go back and watch? Yeah, it? so old school, you know, you have to go there and you got an SD card. You can most oh, of the time okay. nowadays you can have like an adapter to your phone. You can see them all right there. Delete what you want, save what you want, and um, you know, then stick it back in the card. So I mean. You may have to be could be a little more careful, you know, as far as scent and making too much of a ruckus out there. But uh, see, I got my buddy. His before he did some cell cameras, he he would put corn out there. Next leaves and ten minutes later, bam, deer in the corn. So there's a convenience factor to it. I don't think there's any. I don't know. I mean, if you got some iffy deer, stupid question probably because I'm ignorant on these topics, but. Are there like legal and illegal things you can do to lure deer? No, I mean, well, some states. Now, North Carolina, you can hunt with corn. You okay. Know, hunt over corn pile, spread it out, and everything. Now, I don't know what. I think in some uh, some states you can't be over a bait pile. Okay. Um, but heck, you put corn out of there, and they might not want to go eat. They might not want to go out to eat. You know, that night. They don't right. They might eat in. They might eat it. So, uh, <laughs> honey, we ate out last night. <laughs> we are not going to that corn pile tonight. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, it definitely helps. Um, I mean, but sometimes you think the deer asks the wife, "What do you want to eat?" and she don't know, just like humans don't know. They're mine. <laughs> you, think, you think they have that problem just yeah. like we do? Yeah. Well, what do you, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know what. What do you want? Exactly. You well, want I'm acorns? asking you what you, you want. want. You want to go to the soybean field? You want acorns? Hey, you know, honey, acorns only come in a certain time of the season, so we got to take advantage of it. You want the corn? You want to go to the corn field, the corn pile? I'm feeling something green tonight. Exactly. So they're going to the soybeans, at least early season soybeans. Okay. So, you know, it's tricky stuff, but... Uh, <laughs> Deer hunting, I tell you, but sometimes you're sometimes you're better off set just setting over like a, a, a mock scrape or a well, you can set up a mock scrape and or if you find scrapes, rub lines, deer trails. Sometimes those are more effective than corn piles because you just imagine if you're going to a corn pile whole summer, bam, bam, that's where it is, and then you go a few times, well, dag up, there's no corn here. You gonna go back to there the next night? Hell no, you know, so you're gonna be like, well, shoot. But uh, yes, that's the little spill on the corn pile. He actually just sent me something. Sent. Wait. Tap to see blurred image. Oh yeah. Wait. How you got a? Uh, how many pointer? How, what, how many? He's in a field. What we got there? We got a one, two, three, four. Looks like we got a eight pointer. Wow. All right. So look. So he, so how you can judge deer? People can't see this, but. I'd shoot him. I'd take a, I'd take a slap at him. <laughs> but like, you, I mean, the length, if their legs look long, how far down the neck goes into the chest. That shows that's what the all, age. The or age. The, if like yeah. he looks more of like a thicker body, of course, you know the legs look a little shorter. It looks like he's ate older. some corn in his life. He's ate some corn. He's got that neck goes down. He's got a little brisket there. All right. You know, maybe like a. Bryce says a human. What is your favorite style of corn to eat? Man, you I got like your on corn. the cob. You got oh, you know like cream silver, corn. I like that silver queen okay. on the cob. I tell on you. the cob. Oh my gosh! So, which well, cream corn is good? But man, I bet between my family and Anna's family, we could eat a dag um whole row of corn. <laughs> it is so good. So Mary, Anna's mom, do next time you have corn on the cob, it's just mayonnaise and Parmesan cheese, mm. and you and butter. Maybe there's some butter mixed in there. And you just mix that and put that on the corn cob. And then obviously some black pepper. I tell you, it is so good. I've never thought to it do is, any of that before. It is, now, outside brothers. of the butter and the salt and pepper. Yeah. So you do mayonnaise, Parmesan cheese, mix it all up. And put, oh, my gosh. Okay. I'm hungry. I'll try that. I'll check that out. All right. So uh, Bryce loves his ECU football, but he also loves his fishing. I do. And... Uh, Maybe not by by complete choice, but you said right. you uh, missed most of the game this past week. I did. I was. I tell. I all put on my head. We're going fishing offshore. Cool. Um, well, we have a three thirty start last week. Three thirty start. Yeah, kickoff. And I was like, well, heck, I'll surely be in by like you know, two or you know three at the latest. And uh, I was like, well, heck, okay. Leave the dock at six in the morning. We go every which way. We went. Ended up going. 60 miles out trying to catch swordfish. Um, didn't do that, but just bouncing. The guy we're with um, knows what he's doing. He loves fishing. and um, 
he doesn't really care about the football game. No, I, okay. I think I was the only one who really cared <laughs> about the football game. So I was kind of a uh, uh, outnumbered there. Yeah. Um, I didn't say anything about it because I was like, ah, shoot, well, I'm sure we'll be back in time. And uh, sure enough, I kept looking at the phone. I'm like, dang, oh, it's one o'clock. We got an hour and a half ride in. Yada yada yada. And long story short, we didn't get back to the dang end of the canal till I think it was probably like 4.30, 4.45. So we're looking almost five half o'clock, time here. Yeah. 5 o'clock. I remember when I looked at my phone and there was like 10 minutes left in the third quarter. And I was uh-huh. like, okay, okay, I can at least watch some. Well, then they wanted to go on a sunset cruise. And then it just then I had it on my phone, right? And I was like, yes, been watch, watching it. And Anna was quick to say, look, you've been gone all day. <laughs> time to hang out with me. I'm like, all right. So, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch any of the game, just the highlight. I did actually see the touchdown that, uh, ironically, that um, Mason Garcia threw. Yeah. So, I did see that. I was like, oh, that was cool. And I uh, saw we were winning when we were in the turn base and then all that. So, it was... I was torn, you know. I wanted well, to watch ECU, but I wanted to fish. Hey, you got another week coming up this week where you're going to watch the Pirates take on UCF. What you uh, Real quick, what would you catch? Uh, we caught some Amberjack, uh, Barracuda, a few dolphin. Barracuda, like the, like real, like Barracuda with the teeth? Oh, yeah. So, I didn't catch it, but my, I guess you could say he's my friend. He's Jay's age. I guess he's a friend. Can you okay. have a friend? He's you're my friend. Acquaintance. You're, you're older than... You know, get, we're, we're, we're buddies. We're, we're buddies. We're friends. Pals. So we're yeah. So we're uh, jigging over um, like sort of bottom uh, bottom fishing. We're jigging for some bee liner bee liners. Yeah, and um, which is you know good eating fish. And he's jigging out open you know a big spinning reel. Hooks one. He's reeling up, and then all of a sudden his rod goes and like takes off. And then they're catching the barracuda. Oh wow. Yeah, that is a see. big animal. That's me and Anna. Wait, wait. Oh, here you go. Yeah, oh, look at them animal. teeth on that thing. So that's real. Do you eat those? No, no. I think okay. some of the barracudas like a mer- they're high in mercury. Okay. Look where he got gaffed. I mean, they're like dinosaur fish. He will. Not oh my to, God. He will not be able to see very well, Cotton. <laughs> <laughs> right through the eye. And then here's uh, one of the amberjack I call. We call. Oh, that's a nice reef donkeys. Reef donkeys. Yeah, okay. reef donkeys. If a uh, barracuda got onto your hand, how much would that hurt? It would hurt a lot. Do uh, they look, ooh, do they feel as barracuda. dangerous as they look? You know what I'm saying? Like they I don't look, think they're going to attack you, but, I mean, you okay. start doing They're probably something. scarier than they actually are. They are. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but they're wild. I mean, they're, it was cool hit, watching them fight that. Yeah, that's neat. Um, yeah, we caught some dolphin, and which is always fun because, you know, that's your mahi tacos. This is nice and mellow there. It is. Shirley, I don't know if we're going to get our last break in today or No. We'll make up for it When tomorrow. we hit the mellow, that's when we've gone too far. Gone too far. No. Hey, it's our, how did 10 minutes go by just like that? Because we're just uh, just a couple guys talking fishing, bro. That's Y'all are right. two pals talking <laughs> fishing. Yeah. Well, yeah, so it was good. We know we had some, ate some cobia. Um, they, so the cobia, believe it or not, we're out there trolling, and he's, he's swimming right next to the boat. We're how do like, you spell that? C-O-B-I-A. Oh, there it is. And uh, somewhere right next to the boat, and like, well, y'all don't catch them. So we, I mean, like, right next to the boat. And sure enough, they pitched it out there. That is a long, slender and, uh, fish, ain't yeah. it? Yeah. And if they can get big, they can get up to 100 pounds. Wow. Oh, it's about, like, that size. And sure enough, just pitched it to them right next to the boat and psh, caught them. And it's like, well, bud, you're Well, y'all must be living right then. He would want yeah. to get caught. It's like, well, bud, you're going in the box. Yeah. With not your choice. <laughs> night, night. Bryce, enjoyed it, buddy. Yeah. We're sure. out of time. That's crazy. I know. Hey, hey Where guys. Time go? I saw a picture on Twitter, and it shows the top three rushing leaders in the American Conference. Of course, Keith Mitchell leads the conference with 574 yards rushing, which is sixth in college football. I did the math. 426 yards is needed to be the first running back. He already said that? No, no, no. Uh, oh, I, I was going to say go uh, to be the first thousand yard rusher since Ventavious Cooper. Wow. 2014. There we go. So See if we can be a grander. A grander. I like that. Yeah. Never heard That's that. That's a one. fishing term. Okay. Looking for our first grander since Cooper. Back in 14. Bryce. Pao. Prediction. Oh, ECU wins. Bye. 
Dang it. I mean, we scored 52 points. Yeah. I mean, but I think it's going to be a tight game. I'm going ECU 37. Is that possible? Yep. 37. UCF 31. We'll see you Thursday, 3 o'clock on an all-new edition of Pirate Radio Live. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to Pirate Radio Live, an exclusive presentation of the voice of the Pirate Nation. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington.